What's up guys Chaos Shinobi here. This is what if Naruto is raised by the Black Ops. Summary, trained from a young age by the Anbu, Keke Genkai wielding Naruto grows strong. Godlike Naruto, Swordsman Naruto, Anbu Naruto, Smart Naruto, Rinnegan Naruto, Wood Style Naruto. Naruto X Harem. Chapter 1. Beginning. Exterior. Konoha. Back Hills. Forest. Morning. Confronted by six Iwakuno Ichi. Nude and unarmed except for hastily grabbed kunai, six-year-old Naruto Uzumaki held a two-pronged kunai in reverse grip. He wore a navy long-sleeved shirt, black pants, a small backpack, and sandals. I'm not impressed by how easily I was able to lure you into my trap, deadpanned Uzumaki, so, this is the part where you surrender. What trap, brat? Demanded the Iwa squad leader. In a flash, Naruto shot gold adamantian chains from his back binding them whilst wooden pillars shot out of the ground. Then the pillars grew tendrils and roots that wrapped around each prisoner's limbs, joints and waistlines whilst shifting into Y-frames, draining their chakra in the process. Wood clones strictly and efficiently bound the prisoners further whilst placing movement restricting and chakra suppression seals on them, further preventing the prisoners' chances of escape. Naruto cheekily grinned, that one. Let us go, brat. Growled one of the prisoners. Why would I let spies go free? Scoffed Naruto. As pretty as you ladies are, letting you go right after capturing you would be counterproductive, you know? The Iwa squad leader snapped, fuck you. Sorry, Kunoichi-san, but I don't know where you've been. Nor do I know who or what else has already been inside of you or any of your holes. Replied Uzumaki, making the prisoners blush bright red at the implication before he gagged them, took several photos of each prisoner, and searched them for any hidden weapons and seals. As his prisoners glared, Naruto mentioned, by the way, Onko-chan. Niko Chan, Wolf Chan, Tenzo Niikan, Canary Chan, Raven Niikan, Dove Chan, Owl Niikan, Crow Niikan, and Inu Niikan, you can all come out now. Coast is clear, and the spies have been subdued. Before his clones disappeared, as Onko Mitarashi, age 15, accompanied by a handful of Anbu, stepped into the open with an amused grin, Naruto held out a large box full of Dengo, Happy Birthday, Onko Chan, I got you some new toys to play with and your favorite Dango, ah, now here's a sweetheart who knows how to spoil me, and make me feel special. Mused Anko who met Naruto at eye level, smiled, kissed his cheeks and forehead, and hugged him closely, burying his face in the cleavage of her large breasts. Looking up into her eyes with flushed cheeks, Naruto beamed, I'll always spoil you and make you feel special, when I get the chance, because you're very precious to me, Anko-chan. Heartwarmed, Anko beamed, and you're precious to me too. Narukun. The Iwa squad was increasingly unnerved by their captor and his choice of companions. Arriving out of breath, Iruka sighed in relief. Naruto, thank Kami that you're okay. I got worried when you didn't come to class. Shikamaru told me he saw you heading out here. Did you know there were enemy shinobi sighted, or were you just skipping class? Some civilian born classmates lied that they'd be my friends if I brought back a souvenir from yesterday's skirmish. I didn't actually believe them. Regardless, I decided to lure the scouts into a trap, capture them and signal the Anbu by flaring up my chakra. I've got cage level reserves, so I'll need to work on my chakra control way harder than everyone else. As your sensei, I'd like you to tell me if anyone tries to trick you like that again. You could have been hurt, kidnapped or killed. Why would Iwa kidnap me? What am I worth to Iwa, when most of Konoha treats me like I'm worthless? Asked Naruto, skeptical. Why would Iwa want one of my kind in their village? Your kind? Asked Anko as she met Uzumaki at eye level. Aren't I a demon? Like the villagers claim while terrorizing, torturing, abusing, and beating me as close to death as they can? Replied Naruto, making everyone including the prisoners flinch. Kissing Naruto's forehead and cheeks, Anko wrapped her arms around him, Fuck no, you're not a demon, devil or monster. And don't let anyone convince you otherwise. You're Naruto Uzumaki, and you're my favorite treasure. Giving Midarashi a kiss on the cheek, Naruto hugged her with all his might, I love you with all my heart, Anko Haim. With flushed cheeks, the snake mistress returned. Ah, I love you too, Narukun. As Iruka turned towards him, Naruto asked, Can my file say this was my first S rank mission? I literally just captured six Siwa spies, who are all Jonin, by myself. And I expect full on B level payment for this. How about I treat you to some ramen? How about I get properly paid for single handedly capturing Iwa spies? And how about people keep their hands off of my well deserved and earned money? Excuse me? A bowl of ramen won't pay my bills, you know. You know I'm overcharged basically everywhere I go, and I live alone. Finally, noticing the prisoner's state of undress, Iruka, Inu, 
Owl and Tenzo were sent rocketing back by massive nosebleeds. Why are they naked? Asked Wolf, amused. After eating all of their food without them noticing, I destroyed their clothes, sealed away their equipment and any items of value, and found them bathing. Then I took some photos, and gave myself a little head start before leading them into a trap. Cheeky Narchan, giggled Dove. It was a little perverted to make them naked, stated Canary. Erasing evidence of them being here is standard procedure. Replied Uzumaki, and little more stands out more than a shinobi's uniform. Point taken. Naruto, please don't scare me like this again. Pleaded Iruka as he recovered. I can't make promises like that, you know. Pointed out Uzumaki. Later, interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, Iviki's office. I want to join Anbu, declared Naruto, completely serious. Why do you want to join up? Asked Iviki, almost spilling his coffee. The Anbu's been protecting me since I was a newborn and saved my life so many times. It's always looking out for me and watching over me, and it's the closest I have to a family. Where would we even put you? With a squad already under orders to protect me. It'd save time tracking me down if I'm with them. And one of the best ways to protect me is to raise me, and train me until I'm more than strong enough to protect myself. I see your logic, and it's sound, for Agaki. I may be six years old, but I'm not innocent. If I may recommend a code name for myself within the Anbu, I suggest Yami Kitsune, I like it. I'll be mutually loyal, respectful, supportive and trusting of those who are towards me without an ulterior motive. I won't give blind loyalty, support, respect or trust. If I did, I'd be dead by now. Good to know you're wise for your age. Also, we wouldn't want the politicians interfering with Anbu affairs, so they can't find out. Especially Donzo team, the warmongering pedophile. I wouldn't let him anywhere near an asset like a Jin Churiki. I'm a human being, not a machine, weapon or tool. Agreed. As my new CEO, you should know that I've met and been speaking to the QB vixen. She says I can trust you because you were on my mother's on Boo squad, and you're one of my godfathers along with Jiraiya Sensei. Informed Uzumaki as he looked into Aviki's eyes. The scarred on Boo veteran nodded, does that mean you know your heritage? Also, QB Zeshi? Yes to both, and keeping my heritage a secret is honestly hurting me more than revealing it would. At least let people know I have godparents so I can have a legal guardian for Kami's sake. And keeping that I'm a real Uzumaki a secret is hindering my development as a ninja. What are we discussing? Asked Haruzin as he entered, accompanied by a teenage boy with short dark curled hair, fair skin and black eyes. The kid knows his heritage, and he wants to join Anbu, answered Morino, and he's making a reasonable case, I'm open to becoming an interrogator too. Added Uzumaki, I saw it all through my crystal ball, said Haruzin, this is a very serious matter to discuss. Hi, Gramps. Hi. Shisui Niikan, greeted Naruto. Hey, Naruto. Greeted Shisui the teleporter, what's this I heard about you becoming an interrogator? After all the things the villagers have done to me, I have plenty of ideas and inspiration for what I'd do to a prisoner under interrogation. Especially if I'll be interrogating and torturing members of the civilian council. I know people say Anbu members need darkness, and I'm pretty sure being a Jin Shiriki fills that requirement. A few days later, Interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, Team Ro Barracks morning. As he entered in an Anbu uniform, Uzumaki was greeted by warm and friendly smiles. Hello, Naruto, greeted Nico, age 14, as she knelt down, and removed her mask, I'm Yuga Uzuki, you already know me, I'm Shisui, added Shisui, holding a crow mask. I'm Hizashi Hyudga, said Al as he revealed long dark hair and pale eyes without pupils. Hi, Hizashi Niazan, said Naruto. You know you love me, the sexy Anko Mitarashi, sweetly said Anko. And I'm all yours when you're older, Narukun. When I'm old enough, I want to have my first time with you, Unko Haim, blurted Naruto, earning a blush from the snake mistress. You want to lose your virginity to me? I trust you not to take advantage of me, or force me into it. Kuranai Chan's welcome to join in if she wants to. If you weren't so cute, innocent, and adorable, I'd almost think you were the youngest pervert ever for suggesting a threesome between you, me, and Nai Chan. My point is, I trust both and either of you, and Wolf Chan as well to take care of me. I know I'll be in good hands if my first time is with you. And people call the activity making love, but also say things like share the love, and the more the merrier. Too. Holding her sides, Unko erupted into laughter. I called dibs on teaching you about sex when you're older. I'm more of a physical, hands-on, and practical learner than a theoretical one. Mentioned Uzumaki, making the hysterically laughing Anko fall onto her fine ass, and the other Kunoichi in the room blushed and laughed. Tsumei Inuzuka. Self-introduced a young, feral-looking Kunoichi, age 21, holding a wolf mask with red markings. I'm classmates with your son and daughter, said Uzumaki. I can tell from their markings and their facial features, 
Good eye, pup. Praised Sume. I am Itachi Uchiha, said Raven, who removed his mask. Dev removed her mask, revealing fair skin, short brown hair, a purple stripe on each cheek, and hazel eyes. I'm Rin Ohara. I'm Izumi Uchiha, self-introduced canary as she removed her mask, revealing fair skin, onyx eyes, and shoulder-length black hair. There's three Uchiha on the squad? Thought Naruto. Interesting. Tenzo Yamato, said a young man, age 23 with shoulder-length brown hair, Kakashi Hatake. Self-introduced Inu who removed his Anbu mask, and, to everyone else's shock, pulled down his face mask revealing an overkill handsome face. Your left eye's covered, Kakashi Nikan. Does it need fixing? Asked Uzumaki. I had a transplant, but it was a rushed procedure in the field so I have to be careful when I use it, explained Kakashi. The transplanted eye has a Sharingan, but I can't turn it off. I can fix that for you, insisted Naruto if you'd like. Earning speechless expressions. As the official team medic, I'll approve the attempt, mentioned Yugao, having complete faith in the kid. Naruto placed a hand, glowing with golden chakra, over Kakashi's revealed left eye before the silver-haired Jonin's stance relaxed, then he withdrew his hand, it's done, but you should take some time to get used to it, you'll still have your Sharingan, but now you can turn it off when it's not needed, thank you, said Hitake as he looked in a hand mirror to see his facial scar was gone. You could try going without the face mask when you're not on a mission, maybe. So, what code name have you received, Naruto? Asked Yugao. Yami Kitsune, answered Naruto who donned an expressionless black fox-like hunter nin mask with dark red eye outlines and whiskers. What do you think? You look so cute in your little uniform, but powerful and intimidating in your mask. I thought a fox mask would be a token of respect, friendship with, and acknowledgement of Karama-chan, or Kara-chan for short. Yeah, I've already met her. And she says mum wore a similar mask, said Naruto as he removed his mask. Kyuubi's a girl? Sweet. Mused Anko, that brings hell hath no wrath like a woman scorned, to a whole new level. Oh, you have no idea how right you are. Thought Kara. That makes her more terrifying, commented Tenzo. Naruto, you befriended the Nine Tails? Wondered Yugao, amazed and concerned. Yes, admitted Uzumaki. Kara-chan also says that mum would be very proud of you, Rin-chan, Itachi. Tsume Chan and Kakashi like a parent would be proud of their children. And that when he reaches the afterlife, she'll hit and yell at Kakashi for not letting her see that handsome face even once while she was alive. For not adopting me after she raised him as her son following Sakumo kun's death. And for reading something called Smut in public. Earning smiles and chuckles. When you're with us, you can turn off your appearance masking seal, informed Kakashi. Naruto's complexion became fairer, his hair transitioned from blonde to Uzumaki red, his whiskers became smaller and his eyes turned purple with a ring pattern, so, how do I look? Itachi, Izumi, Hizashi and Shisui's eyes widened, Rinnegan? Yes. Confirmed Naruto who deactivated the Dojutsu, revealing blue eyes. What should we teach you to start off with? Wondered Sume. How about I show what I can already do, and we start from there? Suggested Uzumaki. Sounds good, pup. We'll make you a master of weapons, sealing, and jutsu before you know it. Added Yugao. Can we all get a group photo together, with and without our uniforms? Asked Naruto. I've never had family photos before. Of course we can, sweetie. Answered Izumi. Taking a photo together whilst cuddling, Naruto blushed as Onko kissed his cheek at the last second. Later. Interior. Konoha. Anbu. Men's locker room. Morning. Entering. Yami Kitsune noticed everyone, not from his squad, had gone still like deer in headlights. Hey, everyone. I'm Yami Kitsune, but you can call me either part of the codename. Do we have baby Anbu now? Asked Bor, confused. Depends if you're wearing a diaper under your uniform, Bor-chan. Peace Yami Kitsune, earning laughter. Damn, you're as troublesome and feisty as the last Anbu to wear that mask, sighed dear. I figured that out as soon as I recognized the mask, you know. She had that verbal tick too, Muse Lion. Should we expect you to go on any missions soon? Kakashi interjected. My newest protege will be undergoing a considerable amount of intense training before we even consider it. A year or two at least, since we have minimum age requirements on deployable operatives. How formidable is he so far? Asked Ox. He's full of surprises. You know those Iwa Jonin that were captured the other day? That was his handiwork. He also interrogated a couple of them personally, with the rest already on his schedule. Dear turn to Yami Kitsune. Should we be worried that you're already breaking prisoners? Yami Kitsune gave the scariest yet sweetest smile with his eyes closed, only if you're on the receiving end. You know? How old are you anyway? Six, turning seven, 
and I have no obligation to justify my being here. Troublesome, but we won't judge you. Not being judged would be a first for me. Kitsune-kun, you can relax. There are no Foundation or Root agents here, or Civilian Council pets, little brother. Assured Inu slash Kakashi. I know, Inu ni Ikan. I just don't trust new people easily. Neither do I. Yami Kitsune turned to everyone. I hope we can all be brothers. Or as the Mandalorian Savonan, Dolphin would like you, said Deer. I agree, Hiruka likes the more interesting people in the village. Any bloodlines and chakra natures we should know about, so we can take them into account when working with you? Asked Dragon. Yami Kitsune's Rinnegan met Dragon's gaze, Iviki has a briefing to answer that. Good. Exterior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, Training Ground, Morning. Yami Kitsune drew a kunai, I'm ready. Okay, Yami Kitsune. Hit the targets, but only one throw and one kunai. Instructed Onko. As he threw the kunai, Yami Kitsune quickly did a hand sign before all 1,000 targets were hit with a bullseye by the kunai and 999 kunai shadow clones, earning drop jaws and sweat drops. What? I didn't say you could use a jutsu to help you, or to go for all of them. I was told to hit the targets with only one throw, and I did. Was it meant to ricochet off of all of the targets, or was I meant to get up close and personal? That was clever, sweetie. Praised Nico, but where did you learn the jutsu? I found it inside a scroll mounted like a trophy on a wall in the Hokage's mansion. I figured it was where he kept his deluxe edition Icha Icha collection, and wanted to hold it for ransom. Of course, I opened the scroll to check before doing anything else. Since it was full of advanced jutsu instead, I figured I may as well read and learn from it before putting it back. You learn techniques from the scroll of sealing? Asked Tinu, impressed and surprised. Well, the Anbu squad hiding in the room didn't try to stop me. Shrugged Yami Kitsune, it turned out the Hokage saw everything through his crystal ball. You knew the guards were there? Asked Tenzo. Yeah, they need to sharpen their stealth skills. They were so lazy they could have made the Nara clan look as hyperactive as my Ogai. Answered Yami Kitsune, earning laughter. And why did you want to ransom the Hokage's Icha Icha collection? Have you seen the apartment I was given after the orphanage threw me out? Fair enough, and maybe we can do some wood-style renovations and improvements. And you can live in the barracks in the meantime. Yami Kitsune turned to Tsume slash Wolf, Tsume-chan. Have you signed a summoning contract? I have. You've done what? As he stood back from his teachers, and removed his mask, Naruto called, summoning Jutsu. Before a purple-robed and pointy-hooded human-like male with lightly tan skin, and purple hair and eyes, wielding a long green staff appeared. Greetings, I am Mahad, the Dark Magician, one of Naruto's summons. None have signed the dual spirit summoning contract since Ashura Otsutsuki. As Mahad returned to his realm, Nico asked, since we're training Naruto, what should we do about his schooling? He can't just drop out of the academy, and leave his friends behind. That would make people suspicious, and he needs to spend time with the other kids. I'll still go for the social experience. Maybe I'll play a prank on Iruka sensei so he thinks Kakashi's disguised as me. Poor Iruka, said Itachi. Hey, Itachi Niikan, you know the Tsukuyomi? I believe my Rinnegan can use it and other abilities of the Mangekyo Sharingan. Do I even want to know how you know about that? Kurama's been explaining the different abilities of each dojutsu in case someone with the Sharingan gets any ideas about trying to control her again. She has plenty of colorful ways to describe and express how much she hates the Sharingan more than anything. I'm sure she does, and they're likely all justified given her history with it. She also says I should learn how to keep those filthy eyes from stealing the rewards of my hard work and training. And the only members of the Uchiha clan she has any respect for are you, Shisui, Mikoto, and your girlfriend. Izumi's not my girlfriend, am I invited to the wedding? You're refreshingly cheeky, mused Itachi, you know I'm going to get you back for that comment? What kind of little brother would I be if I didn't tease you a little? Asked Naruto. And can we go out for a Jiraku ramen? Itachi poked Naruto's forehead. Sorry, Naruto-kun. Maybe some other time. Before internally laughing at the boy's pout. I'll go with you, Naru, said Anko as she brought Naruto into a hug. We'll make it a date, and it's cold tonight so we can share my bed to keep warm. Uzumaki nodded, as you wish. What's your favorite jutsu? Naruto asked as he looked at Shisui. And can I learn it? Let's find out your elemental affinity first. I have a multi-affinity with basically everything, all types of nature release, and I can do shadow clones and all of the elemental clones. This is where the fun begins. Mused Tsume. Hey, Tsume Haim, are you a sage too? Asked Naruto. Tsume raised an eyebrow. What do you mean too? Don't tell me you've learned sage mode. And at your age? As his pupils became horizontal bars with vertical slits, Naruto informed, I did, 
and I suspect my Rinnegan made achieving it easier. Jiraiya would be so jealous that you've unlocked Sage Mode at 6 years old. I can tell this is something beyond normal Sage Mode, but Kurama-chan's not saying why. Maybe I have a special connection to nature which allows me to instinctively gather nature energy whether I'm consciously aware of it or not. Show of. As he met Shisui's gaze, Naruto asked, Shisui Niazan, can you please promise never to use Koto Amatsu Kami on me? Shisui nodded, I never have and never will use it on you. It took a while to earn your trust, and I won't break it. Interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, P Division, Interrogation Room, Afternoon. Entering the cold dark room to see one of the prisoners he'd captured tied down to a rack, naked, in an X-shape. Yami Kitsune was like a phantasm in his movements. Whoever you are, I won't talk, said the prisoner, fear increasingly evident in her voice as she trembled upon feeling the intensity of her interrogator's key. In a deep, ominous voice, Yami Kitsune replied, Talk? It is not my intention to make you talk. I will make you scream. Interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, D Division, Detention Block. Afternoon. Through one-way glass, Anko watched the interrogation with a bowl of popcorn. Damn, my foxy coon's putting on a good show. I'm officially in love with him. You're enjoying this too much, sighed Nico. Here comes the climax. Eagerly anticipated Anko before they could swear they heard the shriek of a Nazgul. That's the scariest orgasm sound I've ever heard. You haven't heard mine, chuckled Wolf. Tenzo shifted uncomfortably. I am too young to listen to this conversation. Your minds are as dirty as Zenu's book. Grumbled Aviki, he's torturing the prisoner, not fucking her. They know, it's just Anko's sense of humor, replied Owl. Speaking of, I worry how my niece would be influenced if she was introduced to Anko too soon. Doesn't she have a crush on Naruto? Asked of. Hyashi and Hara find it adorable. Do they have any plans to have another child yet? Asked Tenzo. Not yet, but two of the suggested names for a girl are Kushina and Hanabi. Kushina? Asked Wolf, smiling at the thought. They really loved our red hot habanero didn't they? We all loved and treasured Kushina Haim. Answered Hiruzen as he appeared, just as we love and treasure her mother, Tsunade Haim. Later, interior, Konoha, Shinobi District, Kurunayanko's apartment, living room, morning. Narukun, you actually said that about us? Giggled Kurunai, age 15, as she looked at the blushing Uzumaki who nodded. He sure did. Confirmed Sume. And he had the cutest look on his adorable face when he did. Snickered Anko, amused. Kurin I planted a kiss upon Naruto's cheek, you're a very cheeky yet innocent boy, and I love you for it. Hugging you he, Naruto beamed, I love you too, Naiheim. Always will no matter what happens. Thank you, Narukun. The only one of us he didn't bring up when he said it was me, sighed Yugao. I'm sorry for neglecting you, and making you feel left out, Yugao chan Apologized Naruto who hugged the purple-haired medic nin. Hiding a blush, Yugao kissed his forehead, don't worry, Naru-chan. I forgive you, and will always love you, sweetie. I love you too, Kitty Haim. Looking up at Anko with indomitable determination, Naruto vowed, Heavy Haim, I promise I'll find a way to remove your curse mark. Mitarashi embraced Uzumaki, Thank you. I love you, Anko-chan. Ah, I love you too, my Naru-kun. Anko Mitarashi, will you marry me? Asked Uzumaki, completely innocently yet seriously, with an adorable expression. You're a bit too young for marriage right now. Darling, can you please wait until you're older? Gently asked Anko, it'd mean a lot to me if you'll be patient with me, so we can both take the time to sort out whether that's what both of us really want, then gave a precious smile. That was part of the plan, hi, let's take, say, 10 years to sort all of this out. Plus, you'll have developed and matured physically, intellectually, emotionally and mentally in that time. Okay, Mitarashi mentioned, when we're sure that's how we love each other, I'd happily marry you when the time's right earning a precious smile from the boy. As you wish, Anko Haim, agreed Naruto. I'll make sure to take you on lots of dates in the meantime, so we have plenty of time to work out our true feelings for each other. Good plan, my darling Naruto-kun. And I'll be happy to share you with Nai-chan, as long as that's alright with Nai-haim too. And I'll do my best to do right by both of you. Kurin I smiled at how thoughtful the boy was being. Checking the time, Yu Gao gave Naruto a storage scroll, in place of a backpack. Have everything you need for the academy, sweetie? Yes, Yu Gao Chan. Good boy, said Yu Gao, who smiled. I'll walk you to school when it's time to go, okay? Asked Anko. Okay. Can I prank Hiruka Sensei? As long as it's a harmless one. Interior, Konoha, Academy, Classroom, Late Morning. Naruto, how nice of you to finally join us. Where have you been for the last hour? Asked Hiruka as Uzumaki entered, 
reading a book. With a shrug as he kept reading, Naruto answered, Sorry I'm late, Iruka sensei I'm afraid I got lost on the path of life, making some of his peers laugh. Iruka sweat dropped, You're late because you've been hanging out with Kakashi? I would have been on time, but along the way, we were ambushed and chased all over the village by this possibly insane workout fanatic who was shouting about his flames of youth. Added Naruto. Iruka went pale, I believe you. Stupid Naruto Baka. I bet you can't even read, you idiot, why does someone like you have a book? Screeched Sakura, making everyone cover their ears. Hmm? You say something? Dismissed Uzumaki, ignoring the banshee, before taking a seat next to Shikamaru. Troublesome, muttered Nara. Would you have me any other way? Chuckled Uzumaki. No, I wouldn't trade having your troublesome self around for anything in the world. You're one of my best friends. Thanks, Shika. That really means a lot to me. What are you reading? Asked Nara, taking an interest. The Tale of the Utterly Gutsy Shinobi by Jiraiya Sensei, answered Naruto. Any good? I think so, especially since I'm named after the main character. Shikamaru nodded. Oh, by the way, said Naruto as he smirked at the trio of idiots who lied to him. Here's your souvenir. And held up a severed head, with a sickeningly sweet smile, sending them out screaming. After a moment as everyone looked at him in horror. Except for Kiba, Hana, Shino, Choji, Hinata Shikamaru, Naruto did a hand sign, Kai. Revealing a party-sized bag of chips which he passed to Choji who smiled. Are you okay, Naruto? Asked Kiba, age 5, concerned. You weren't here the other day, and we all know you never get sick. I was being chased by Iwa Nins in the back hills. Why were they chasing you? I ate all of their food, answered Uzumaki, earning a high five from Choji, I'm a growing boy, you know? Before doing a discreet hand sign, and whispered under his breath, muting jutsu. You're always thinking with your stomach, Baka. Screeched Haruno, at the top of her lungs, almost making ears bleed, before completely losing her voice. Sound off. Quip Naruto. Thank you for shutting her up, Naruto, said Hana, age 5, gratefully, as she smiled at Uzumaki. My pleasure. Hana, right? Yep, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too, Hanachan. Mused Naruto with a grin. Mischievous, Hana asked, Oh, am I Hanatron already? Naruto ruffled the back of his hair, Is it okay if I call you that? You have no idea how to talk to girls our age, do you, Naruto-kun? Talking to a short-tempered and impatient cage surrounded by a tree's worth of paperwork would be easier for me to master the art of. Admitted Naruto, making his peers chuckle. Interior, Kumo, Reikage's tower, office, morning. The mighty, intimidating powerhouse that was the fourth Reikage sneezed blowing his desk and the accompanying stack of paperwork across the room. Achoo, achoo, do you need a tissue? Rapped Killer B as he entered the room, earning a glare from his brother. Interior, Iwa, Tsuchikage's tower, office, early afternoon. Whilst taking a sip of tea, Anaki sneezed, causing the hot beverage to spill onto his paperwork and his lap. Ah, interior, Konoha, academy, classroom, late morning. I've gotta learn the muting jutsu, sighed Iruka, and Sakura. You have detention for repeatedly screaming in my classroom, and abusing your peers, as the jutsu was released, giving her her voice back, Sakura sneered, it's only Naruto Baka, so it's fine, my mum says the Baka deserves it because he's a freak, you've gotta stop being so mean to Naruto, interjected Ino, Sakura, consider yourself suspended for the next month, snapped Hiruka who gestured to the door, now, get out of my classroom, my mum will hear about this, and make both of you pay, this is the Shinobi Academy, Reminded Shino, the civilian council has no authority here. As Sakura left, Iruka asked, All right, everyone, when I call your name, I want you to stand up, and tell me your goal for the future or what you want to be when you grow up. Understood? Yes, Sensei. Chorus the class. Shikamaru, you're first. Troublesome. Muttered Shikamaru as he got to his feet, When I grow up, I want to be a Jonin of Konoha, and have a family. Ino, your turn. Ino stood, When I grow up, I want to master my clan techniques, and be a medical nin like Tsunade Senju. Tenten, you're next. Tenten stood, I want to be a great kunoichi and kenjutsu master like Yuga Uzuki. With skills that rival the seven shinobi swordsmen of Kiri. That's a nice one. Yakumo stood, when I want to grow up, I want to be a master of genjutsu like Kuranayuhi. Rock Lee, the bushy browed boy stood, I want to prove I can be an excellent shinobi with only taijutsu, like Maido Gai and Maido Dai. Naruto, you're up. As he stood. Naruto simply said, when I grow up, I want to be happy and loved. Earning concern looks from his peers. Fair enough. But is that really all you want? Asked Hiruka, 
hoping for something a little more cheerful. Was I supposed to say something like I wanna be Hokage? Dotobayo? Asked Uzumaki, making people snicker, or maybe something a little more dramatic and intense like Naruto spoke in a deep, chilling, stoic monotone, I'm going to show the world what true pain is. And stop all wars with the terror that pain will inspire. Whilst a chill ran down everyone's spines, Iruka paled, you really worry me, sometimes, you know that? Writing in his notebook, Naruto shrugged, my real goal is to find a way to safely remove Orochimaru's curse marks, so I can help someone I love. Later, exterior, Konoha, academy, rooftop, lunchtime, sitting across from Shikamaru, Choji, Shino, Ino, and Hinata, Naruto took out an ocarina, do you mind if I practice? You're learning an instrument? Asked Hinata. That's wonderful. Naruto soothingly played concerning hobbits, earning smiles and a round of applause when he finished. It seems you were a natural, and the tune was quite pleasant, praised Shino. My colony also expresses its appreciation. What's your secret to having learned so quickly? Asked Shikamaru. Shadow clones, answered Uzumaki. Troublesome. Legend says Doberama Senju invented shadow clones to vanquish an evil so great and terrible that to this day it's remembered and feared throughout the elemental nations as Cage's Bane. What could be so terrifying that it earns a name like that? Asked Hana as she joined them. After a dramatic pause, Naruto answered, paperwork. Making his companions erupt into laughter, except for Shino who smiled and allowed himself an amused chuckle. Exterior, Konoha, Academy, Courtyard, Early Afternoon. First match will be Sasuke Uchiha vs Naruto Uzumaki, said Iruka. With a small smile, Naruto met his opponent's gaze, good luck, Sasuke. You're the one who needs luck, Naruto. You're fighting a new Chiha. I'll be fine as long as your fangirls don't interfere. I don't need them fighting my battles for me. Tell that to them. After exchanging several series of combos without landing a strike on Uzumaki, Sasuke was hit in the gut before he leapt back, and did hand signs, fire style, fireball jutsu, water style, water dragon jutsu. Countered Naruto as the latter jutsu went through the former, and knocked a Chiha onto his back leaving him soaking wet. You okay? Asked Naruto, offering his hand. Getting up with a groan as he took Naruto's hand, Sasuke replied, Yeah, but my dad's going to be disappointed that I lost. And how did it make you feel? Like I need more training, sighed Uchiha whose eyes widened. Mom's going to be furious that I used fire style at school. Not as much as she'd be if you'd actually burnt the school down. Pointed out Naruto, causing Sasuke to pale. Okay, you too. Do the sign of reconciliation and move to the side so the next match can begin, said Iruka, and the two boys complied, also, we will only be using taijutsu now. The class sighed, yes, sensei. Next match is Shikamaru vs Tenten. Troublesome. Fighting a girl, groaned Shikamaru, what a drag. I heard that, indignantly said Tenten. Uh oh. Can I forfeit? Asked Shikamaru, nervous. Iruka shook his head, nope, crap. A few weeks later, exterior, Konoha. Anbu HQ, private training ground, late afternoon, wood style, wood dragon jutsu. Called Naruto before a massive wooden dragon ascended from beneath the ground and lunged towards Tenzo who narrowly evaded. How do you know that jutsu? Asked Tenzo. I basically had a tutorial in my mindscape made from Q-chan and Mito's memories of seeing Hashirama in action, admitted Uzumaki, and one of my powers is being able to understand and master any technique. But unlike if I were using a Sharingan, I'm not copying the technique. Any idea why she wants you getting strong? She's way nicer than anyone stupid enough to call her a demon would expect, and very protective of me. Her father's the sage of six paths. And did you call her Q-chan, before? Kara-chan insists on nicknames like that. Were you using her chakra for that wood dragon? She's on strike from lending it to me until I'm consistently on a healthy diet for a shinobi, and more physically developed. She's willing to improve my healing capabilities, and show me techniques but says it's too soon to consider training and harnessing her powers. I can't believe I'm agreeing with her. She also says I should meet the Eight Tails Jin Shiriki, Killer Bee of Kumo, when I'm training and mastering my Jin Shiriki abilities. Why would she want you to train under the Rekage's brother? Because he's an old friend of my parents, and he's mastered and achieved complete control over his Jin Shiriki abilities. They're in harmony with each other, and friends too. Only problem with contacting him is how strained relations between our villages have been. I also want to learn as much about sealing as possible, to honor my parents and the Uzumaki clan, and so I can learn how to free Anko-chan from the curse mark. I can help you master the basics of sealing, and bring you scrolls and books from our library to help you when I've taught you as much as I know about it. Maybe we can learn more about it together. Sounds good, Tenzo Nikan. If we're lucky, 
we might be able to convince Jiraiya Sensei to teach you next time he's in town, Kara-chan says that finding out I'm alive will be enough to convince the pervy sage to teach me, said Naruto. Tenzo burst into laughter, pervy sage? Kara-chan says it's what mum used to call Jiraiya Sensei of the Sanin who's also one of my godfathers. Promise me you'll continue that trend. Wanna see another jutsu I learned in my subconscious's training ground, for lack of a better term? Sure, with a cheeky grin, Naruto said, don't blink, before throwing a kunai which multiplied by 500, then there was a yellow flash as he disappeared, and reappeared holding the original kunai in a reverse grip. Naruto threw several more of the kunai into various targets in a round perimeter, said, Rosin Flash Super Circle Dance Howl Stage 3 and once more became a yellow flash that raced around the training ground. Returning to Tenzo's side in a flash, Naruto asked, What do you think? I think the name needs shortening, and that you're going to give someone a heart attack. Interior, Iwa, Tsuchikage's office. A short, balding, big-nosed, fossil of a man sneezed, causing his mountain of paperwork to fall on top of him, knocking him off his chair, onto his aching back, and burying him in the accursed forms. Og. My back. Groaned Anaki. Interior, Konoha. Anbu HQ, private training ground, late afternoon. I think I'll shorten the name to Raijin Flash, said Naruto. If you keep doing it in the circle, you could call it Raijin Vortex too. That's actually pretty good too. Tobirama kun invented the original technique. You're probably just rediscovering undocumented moves he created, said Kara, through her link to Naruto. I'll give you credit for the effort in renaming long lost moves, though. At least if he hears them, he won't think you're being a comedian. Thank you for the compliment my lovely vixen chan thought izamaki i love you too my dear naru-kun later exterior konoha training ground late morning practicing his ocarina after finishing training with 3000 shadow and wood clones under izumi and itachi's supervision naruto in his redhead form paused can you please come out now panda chan an adorable little girl with chocolate eyes and brown hair and twin buns approached izamaki hi I'm Tenten. We're in the same class at the academy. Nice to meet you, Tenten-chan. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, replied the redhead. How long have you been watching? Long enough to see you go from blonde to redhead. And your whiskers are cute. Would you like to be my friend? As long as you be my friend too. Deal. Agreed Naruto who mentioned, Hinata-chan. I know you're there too. Before the Hyuga heiress approached. A few weeks later. Exterior. Konoha. Hot springs. Path. Midday. Hey, pervert shouted Naruto, as a redhead, as he crept up behind a man, with very long spiky white hair, who was peeking through a hole in the wall to the women's bathing area. Turning towards the boy who discreetly activated a voice projecting and echoing jutsu, the pervert self-introduced, I am not just any pervert, you naive boy, I am the toad sage of Mount Mayaboku, one of the legendary Sanin, author of the famous Icha Icha series, the great master Jiraiya the Gallant, and I am a super pervert. With a dramatic gasp, Naruto exclaimed, you're the pervy sage. Before cancelling the jutsu, making Jiraiya face fault. As he felt intense concentrations of ki, Jiraiya froze in dread before a dozen pissed off towel, underwear and bathers clad kunoichi beat the crap out of him. Why did you have to do that to me, kid? Instead of peeping in every hot spring and bathhouse across the nations, you should be looking after Naruto, you know? Jiraiya stiffened. How do you know about my dead godson? I'm not dead, I'm standing right in front of you, you know? Shaken. Jiraiya fell to his knees as tears ran down his cheek. Oh, Kami, you're alive. I'm so sorry I haven't been here. If I'd known you were alive, I'd have been here taking care of you instead of abroad managing Konoha's spy network. I'll forgive you if you train me, make up for lost time, and teach me few injutsu. After all, you're currently the only fully trained seal master in the village. Deal, and I don't suppose you know any gorgeous women? I know several and I sensed a few of them on the side of the wall you were peeping on. This isn't how I wanted to meet you. Who told you I was dead in the first place, and why did you believe them? If it was true, Hiruzen would have told you in person, and had you returned to verify the body and attend the funeral. The council told me. You mean Donzo team lied, like the politician and manipulative piece of trash he is. The civilian council shouldn't have known about you being my godfather. And the clan heads wouldn't dare lie about something like this if they knew, especially not the Inuzuka clan. Got that right? Cutie, agreed Tsume as she appeared, in two towels, one wrapped around her waist and the other around her chest as a makeshift top. Pervy Sage, if you try peeping on Tsume Haim, or any other of my precious people, especially to get inspiration for your smut, I'll put you under a genjutsu that shows you might oh guys Colgate smile in the sunset technique on a loop for 72 hours. And there'll be a thousand of him, oiled up and naked, 
threatened Naruto. Tsume erupted into feral laughter at the horror on Jiraiya's face. If you get any paler, you're going to look like your pedophilic psycho ex-teammate, Orochimaru team. Tease Duzumaki, you know? I'll still be more handsome than him. By the way, Hiruzen wants to see you, so don't get lost on the path of life on the way to his office, said Uzumaki. You have two minutes before he sends Anbu to bring you by force. Or I can deliver you via airmail. What do you mean by that? Asked Jiraiya who was lifted off the ground by an invisible force. Ah. Lining up Jiraiya's trajectory with the Hokage's tower and office, with him facing towards said office, Naruto grinned, almighty push. Before the lecherous sage blasted off like Dean Rocket. That was hilarious, Narukun. Mused Sume who was laughing so hard, whilst her impressive, perky, round DD cup breasts jiggled, that her towels came undone, giving him a perfect view of her naked body which thankfully nobody else was around to see. As time around him seemingly froze, Hiru wrapped her towels around her whilst admiring her figure, and used a couple of safety pins to keep the towels from coming undone again. As time resumed, Sume raised an eyebrow, I could swear my towels just fell off. They did, but I used super speed to fix that. Oh? Did you take a peek and have a nice feel of these in the process? She asked, gesturing to her tits. Briefly, while wrapping the top towel around you to cover them back up. If you don't mind me saying, they're very well developed, nice and firm with soft skin. I found seeing them pleasant, especially up close. Uzumaki gave the cutest smile, and you're one hell of a damn sexy bitch with mesmerizing eyes, curves in all the right places, a fine ass and beautiful breasts, my dear Tsume-chan. Grinning with flushed cheeks. The feral woman laughed, only you could say something like that to my face, at almost seven years old, look like an innocent little angel in the process, and live to tell the tale. His cheeks flushed, thanks, Tsume-chan. You're welcome, Naru-kun, snickered Tsume, and it's a bit too soon to be thinking about women's bodies, isn't it? It's a little late to ask that. True, and Kushina had no verbal filter when it came to compliments that others might think were a bit much. I have an idea for an anti-pervert jutsu that's also an upgraded version of the henge, but I'd probably be mistaken for a pervert while developing or using it. Oh? What's it gonna do? Turn you into a naked woman? Naruto shrugged, well. If it works. The next day, interior, Konoha, Ninja Academy, late morning. Taking the role, Iruka called, Naruto Uzumaki. Before falling backwards off of his chair an alarm as a kunai with a tag attached flew into the back of his clipboard, making most of the class laugh. Reading the tag as he got to his feet, Iruka saw Naruto in the back row, with a camera, Good morning to you too. What do you mean? Do you mean to wish me a good morning? Or that it is a good morning whether I want it or not? Asked Naruto, earning raised eyebrows, or perhaps you mean to say you feel good on this particular morning? Or are you stating this is a morning to be good on? All of them at once? replied Iruka as he scratched the back of his head, and please don't throw kunai at me in answer to your name being called. Before an origami bird landed on his desk, I was using nonverbal means of communication. Right. As Iruka lectured the class on the QB attack, Naruto, with Kurama watching from his mindscape with popcorn, raised his hand, Iruka-sensei, was the Ondame Hokage intentionally being monumentally stupid? Earning stunned expressions whilst Kari erupted into laughter. Excuse me? asked Iruka. A guest. There's a universal balance of power between both the Baiju and between the Shinobi villages. One can't truly kill a Baiju. Oh. They're literally sentient masses of pure chakra with physical form. The most you can do is make them go through a regeneration cycle, since they're immortal. Where are you going with this? Every other village to encounter them seals Baiju away, often inside people. If Yondame Sama was reckless enough to do the former with the strongest of the nine, he left Konoha significantly vulnerable to invasion from other villages, like Iwa, and their Baiju in the wake of us losing him, a large number of shinobi, and the fox has our way of telling them to back off. What do you mean they seal Baiju inside people? Asked Choji, curious. Some of the most complex and advanced seals can seal a Baiju inside a person, and even allow that person to eventually harness the Baiju's chakra. Such people are often called Jinchuriki, the power of human sacrifice, elaborated Naruto. Baiju are typically sealed inside babies, ideally newborns, since their chakra network and coils haven't developed yet. That way, they'll have time for their chakra coils to adapt during development so they can handle Baiju chakra as well as their own. We don't even teach sealing at the academy. How do you know about something like that? Asked Hiruka, jaw dropped. Better question, why in the name of the Sage of Six Paths isn't Fuenjutsu taught at the Ninja Academy? It's one of the most useful powerful and invaluable skills ever. And there are so many types of seals for different uses. Security, protection, surveillance, demolition, traps, transportation, storage, training, healing, 
incapacitating enemies, weapons, chakra control and suppression, resistance, endurance, maintenance, etc. Why wouldn't we be taught something so important? Interior, Konoha, Hokage Tower, Office, Late Morning. Hiruzen, Jiraiya, Kakashi and a handful of Anbu were watching Izumaki through the crystal ball. He just roasted his own father in our academy's curriculum. Thought Hiruzen, Jiraiya, and Kakashi. Later, Interior, Konoha, Private Council Building, Meeting Room, Early Evening. The Civilian Council conspired, blissfully unaware of the fact everything they said and did was overheard, scribed and recorded by undetectable observers. Interior, Konoha, Hokage Tower, Office, Afternoon. As he shunned onto Hiruzen's desk, facing towards a huge, muscular, heavyweight champion of a man in an open white howry, Naruto scowled. Watch that temper when addressing Hokage Gigi, or I'll punch you in the face. Lord A, the fourth Rakage laughed heartily until he realized Uzumaki wasn't joking. Nonchalantly, Naruto gave A an uppercut to the jaw with the chakra enhanced fist, sure you can. Sending him into the air before landing on his back. Rubbing his jaw as he got up, A asked, Boy, can't you tell I'm the Rakage? That's why I pulled my punch, Lord WrestleMania. Answered Naruto, earning stifled laughter from a little girl. Naruto's age, with blonde hair and blue eyes, accompanied by Kirabai aka Killer B. And you wanted to punch me because? One of your shinobi, or at least someone in Kumo shinobi gear, tried to kidnap a friend of mine, answered Naruto whose hair defied gravity and spiked up, it was always going to end badly. Then he gave a sweet smile with his eyes closed, you know? Hiruzen, is this Kushina's boy? Questioned A, having flashbacks about the red-headed woman. Yo, bro, it's an unspoken thing to know. He may not know who's friend or foe. Chimed in B, Kumo and Konoha ain't always get along though they're like brothers. I'm asking because both of us are among his godfathers, if he is Kushina's son. Stepping off the desk, Naruto approached the little girl. Hi, I'm Naruto Uzumaki. What's your N? Pouncing on Uzumaki like a cat, the girl pinned him beneath her on the floor, and purred, I'm Yugito Ni. Before he turned the tables, pinned her down, lifted her shirt, and tickled her midriff making her burst into giggles and smiles whilst squirming beneath him before the two kids looked each other in the eyes with kind smiles. Cats really do have ticklish bellies, joked Naruto. Especially me, replied Yugito, with a cute smile. Helping her to her feet, Naruto asked, Will you be my friend, Yugito-chan? I'd love to if you'll be my friend too, Naru-kun. Naruto turned to the rakage, If you and Biniazan would humble me with training, I would be greatly honored, eh Sama? As long as you don't use anything you learn from us against Kumo in the next war, if there is one with each other as opponents, I will accept your terms on the condition that Kumo never tries stealing bloodlines from Konoha again, said Naruto whose hair defied gravity, it just won't end well for you, you know? Especially when I enter the equation. No doubt about it. You're definitely Kushina's boy. Only Naruto could threaten a cage without causing a political nightmare, sighed Iruka who'd overheard the whole thing upon entry. Who's causing a political nightmare? Asked Donzo Shimura as he entered. At the same time, Naruto and Yugito screamed, Help! Pedophile alert! B. Irika, the Hokaye's Anbu and the Reikage's bodyguards immediately assumed a protective formation in front of the kids, and the two cage glared at Donzo. I'm not a began Shimura. Then why, before the orphanage threw me out, were you always having unsupervised one on one time with little kids who then go missing, die under mysterious circumstances, or come back either traumatized? injured, or with no soul in their eyes. Ask Naruto, you never adopted any of them, and the ones who'd come back would scream for you to stay away from them, while having nightmares. Most of them were orphans with signs of having a bloodline aka Kekegenkai. How do you even know what a Kekegenkai is? Really? You're asking an academy student that question? Wow, you're not just a pedophile, you're a senile pedophile. Donzo turned away, and stormed out of the room, cursing under his breath. Six years later, interior, Land of Water, within Kiri's border, missing Nin Bandit Camp, evening. Having taken out the entire camp of 1,000 bandits, Yami Kitsune, age 12, lifted his mask and gave a precious smile, making Nico and Tenzo sweat drop, before covering his face again. Pack anything of value or interest into storage scrolls. If any of the bandits have a bingo book entry, pack away their corpse for delivery to a collection office. Ordered Nico before the task was completed in a flash. You're a long way from home. Said Akiri Shinobi as he arrived with several of his village's special forces. Yami Kitsune studied the Kiri squad's leader, gravity-defying silver hair, one eye covered, most likely a badass, 
and possesses a dojutsu he wasn't born with in the covered eye. You must be the infamous Kakashi Hatake. The Kirinin's face faulted whilst Yami Kitsune's comrade's sweat dropped. I'm Commander Rao of the Kirianbu, and it's actually blue hair, self-identified Ao. Who are you? I am Yami Kitsune, what's your business here? I'm not at liberty to say, Commander. Now, if you'll excuse us, we'll take our leave. Just a moment, my sword, Seimata, seems to like the little fox's chakra, said a shark like shinobi as he brandished said sword. Put it away, Kisame, ordered a Kirinin wearing bandages as a mask, with a broadsword resembling a butcher's knife across his back, picking a fight with the kids beneath us, you're no fun, Zabuza. He's not a kid. He's a shinobi. And he'd have to be pretty strong to be in the Anbu when he's so small. Permission to socialize with the Seven Swordsmen? Asked Yami Kitsune as he looked at his mission squad leader. Tenzo nodded, granted, Yami Kitsune. Kisame Hoshigaki and Zabuzama Mochi, Yami Kitsune greeted, I'm honored to meet you and the rest of your comrades, thanks, and I look forward to hearing what feats you accomplish in the future, replied Zabuza. Since you're the only one covered in blood, I take it all this was your handiwork? Yes. I think I'm going to like this kid, mused Kisame. How's your form with that sword? I could show you a few moves, and a spar might do you some good. I would be honored to learn from one of the seven. Zabuza chuckled, make that too. This is where the fun begins. Mused Jami Kitsune as he drew his sword, taking a sorisu stance as he infused chakra into the blade which emitted a vibrant hum and glowed blue. Interesting choice, Kit. Observed Zabuza taking his own stance. Were these bandits meant to be anyone special? I didn't waste time talking to them. One of them stole one of our swords, stated Kisame, embarrassed. Taking a uniquely designed sword from a storage scroll, Yami Kitsune held it out, this sword? Earning a nod. Would you mind returning it? Asked Ao before catching the hilt which was levitated towards him by Yami Kitsune. Resuming his stance, alongside six wood clones, Yami Kitsune locked eyes with the shinobi swordsman of Kiri. Shall we dance? before he and his clones gracefully engaged their opponents in a duel. When they finished their duel, Yami Kitsune dispelled his clones, and caught his breath, that was fun, then noticed a young man with pupilless pink eyes, staring at him, what is it, kid, kid? I'm 24 years old. I'm an adult. I'm Yagura Karatachi, Yondame Mizukage, shouted Yagura, I'm very distinguished. And enjoying the paperwork? Peace Yami Kitsune making Yagura face fault whilst everyone stifled laughter. I'm having deja vu, telepathically said Kara, he's not the first Jinchuriki I've run into who wanted to be a cage, but he's the first to become one. He's Isabu's Jinchuriki, right? Thought Naruto. Yes, think he knows I'm your Jinchuriki? Most likely, and I sense he wants to fight you. Yami Kitsune, said Yagura who drew his hooked staff, prepare to defend yourself, causing everyone to tense. With his energy replenished by gathering nature energy, Yami Kitsune ready to Kenjutsu stance, and focused wind chakra into his blade, is this because I called you a kid? Or the paperwork remark? No. Then why do you, the Mizukage, want to fight a random Anbu? You're hardly random, Yami Kitsune. You held your own against the seven shinobi swordsmen, because I did my research on each of them and their swords in case I ran into them. Dead penned Yami Kitsune, my sword versus your staff, no jutsu? Before Yagura nodded, don't know how we're going to explain this in our report. Side Nico, first mission out here, as a full on boo, and he ends up fighting the Mizukagi and the Seven Swordsmen of Kiri. As soon as they're finished sparring, we're leaving, stated Tenzo who paled. Oh, no. While Yagura activated his one tailed cloak, using the three tails chakra to power his Juyo strikes, Yami Kitsune transitioned from his current Kenjutsu form to the tranquil and meditative Neiman. Later, exterior, land of water, Team Rose campsite, late evening. I'm sorry. Did you just say that Yami Kitsune dueled the Mizukage? Questioned Inu as he received their report. In my defense, he challenged me to a duel. I didn't deny him, lest I risk causing an international incident. A week later, Interior, Konoha, Military Police HQ, Evening. As Yami Kitsune brought in a handful of scum, Fugaku asked, Where did you find them? Alleyway outside Ichiraku Ramen. Two were assaulting the owner, Tuchi, and the other four of them were trying to force themselves on his daughter, Ayame. Answered Yami Kitsune. Are they all right? They will be. Dr. Mikido and Dr. Yugao are looking after them. A week later, Interior, Land of Fire, Warlord's Stronghold, Dungeon, Late Evening. Any idea why this kid's so valuable? Asked one of the guards. She's just some orphan, isn't she? As they guarded a cell containing a small girl, age seven, with mint green hair and orange eyes, chained and suspended against a wall. Lord Orochimaru says she's the vessel for the Seven Tails. Won't someone come for her? 
asked one of the guards. They wouldn't know where to look, answered another guard, even if they did, who'd come to rescue a demon's vessel. Another of her kind, the yellow flash, or the Ragedwid. We won't live long enough for the I told you so, if that happens. Interior, Fu's mindscape. The approaching chakra signatures I'm sensing feel so familiar. Once Karama-chan, but who's with her? Wondered Chome as she recalled, it feels like me not Okun and Kushinaheim, but I thought they were dead, maybe they had a child, and that's who's coming. Suggested Fu. That would explain why the chakra presence feels like both of them, but I also sense the power of the six paths, Indra, and Ashura. Interior, Warlord's Stronghold, Dungeon, Evening. Unlocking the barred cell door after taking out the guards in a yellow flash, Yami Kitsune freed Fu and caught her in his arms as she fell from her suspension, awakening to find herself in Naruto's arms, looking into his eyes as he'd removed his mask, she asked, who are you? A friend who's come to rescue you. What's your name, Little Haim? She blushed at being called a princess, I'm Fu, we'll move faster if I carry you. Is that okay, sweetie? He asked in a gentle tone, as though he were speaking to a younger sibling or his own child. Wrapping her arms around his neck as he held her, Fu felt warm and fuzzy inside. Exterior. Land of Fire, Anbu Campsite, Cabin, Afternoon. Appearing in a yellow flash with his new friend, in front of Kakashi, Naruto informed, Captain, my mission is complete. Fu Chan is safe, before gently setting the girl down on her feet. You removed your mask. You know that's against protocol, Yami Kitsune. I sensed her fear, and she wasn't conscious when I found her. She needed to see a friendly face when she woke up, instead of my scary mask. That's reasonable. Since we're both Jin Shuriki. Can I know your name? Asked Fu as she looked up at the whiskered Anbu. Receiving a nod of permission, Naruto answered, I'm Naruto. Fu beamed, tightly hugging Uzumaki, nice to meet you, Niikan. Likewise, my treasured little sister, said Uzumaki as he returned the warm embrace, reassuring Fu that she was indeed safe and protected. When we get you home, you and I are definitely keeping in touch. I know people like us aren't that popular or treated very well. It can be lonely and painful without someone to talk to. The paths we walk bearing the responsibility we've been entrusted with may tempt us towards the darkness. But I will not allow the darkness to claim or consume you. I love you too, Niikan, happily said Fu, and I'd love to stay in touch, so would I. Ah, they're so cute, and it's like they've known each other forever. Mused Nico and Canary as they watched from nearby. Later, exterior, land of fire. Taki, waterfall, evening. Carrying the soundly sleeping Fu as she rested her head against his chest, Yami Kitsune was stopped by a handful of Jonin and Chunin. Please don't wake her. This precious little bundle of joy has been through quite the ordeal, and needs her rest as well as some time to process what happened. Some counseling might be a good idea too. Who are you? Demanded Shibuki, Fu Chan's very protective older brother, answered Yami Kitsune, I urgently need to speak with your leader. Well, here I am. And what's this about? Fu Chan's abduction wasn't at random. Her abductors were servants of Orochimaru, and they knew about Lucky Seven. Several days later, interior, land of fire, small town, hotel room, living room, evening. As he quietly infiltrated the room, Yami Kitsune looked at a busty blonde seemingly in her thirties, a girl in her late teens, and a pig. Hello there. Startled as she whirled around, standing protectively in front of Shizune, Tsunade demanded, who are you? Removing his mask as he stepped into the light, Naruto answered, I'm Kushina and Minato's son. Embracing him, Tsunade wept, Naruto, how is this possible? I was told that you died with your parents, of course those bastard elders told you that. They also kept Jiraiya away as much as they could when he found out I was alive. They kept both of you away from me because I'm the Jin Shuriki of the Nine Tails. How have you been treated by the village? Asked Tsunade, concerned upon hearing the word Jin Shuriki. Have you been well taken care of? I found out my heritage from Karama-chan aka the QB, who's a girl by the way, since Hiruzen wouldn't tell me, and made it all a secret. I was kicked out of the orphanage, in the middle of winter, when I was three. The civilians think I'm QB in human form, and have tried to kill me thousands of times because of that stupidity. The shopkeepers overcharge me for anything and everything if they even let me inside their stores. The civilian council's been trying to sabotage my education and block me from graduating the academy. The civilians treat me like a pariah, and my medical history has its own room. That does it. I'm returning to Konoha with you, for good. I'm sure Sundaime will be thrilled to see you. And further training in medical jutsu would be appreciated if you're willing to teach me? Of course I will, but doesn't being a Jin Shuriki make it impossible for you to use healing chakra? Interestingly enough, I seem to be the exception. I suspect my sage training and bearing the Rinnegan is responsible. Tsunade froze. Did you just say Rinnegan? 
before he showed her his dojutsu. By the way, you owe me 12 years worth of birthday presents, Grandma. Cheeky brat, chuckled Princess Senju as she ruffled Naruto's hair. I take after my mum. You certainly do. By the way, I forgive you for your absence. And I love you, Grandma. I love you too, sweetie, mused Tsunade who kissed his forehead, then placed a necklace around his neck. This was going to be given to you on the day you were born. Later. Interior. Konoha. Hokaye's tower. Office. Conference room. Morning. Entering with Hiruzen. Tsunade and Jiraiya stood before the council with a furious scowl. Raven. Crow. Inu. Canary and Yami Kitsune watched from the shadows. Tsunade. Jiraiya. Welcome B began Donzo who received a punch to the face, sending him flying across the room. How dare you? Growled Tsunade. How dare you bastards lie to us about my grandson? About Jiraiya's godson? How dare you lie to us, and tell us he was dead? Who is this grandson you speak of? Don't play dumb with me, you piece of shit. You know damn well I mean Naruto Uzumaki, Bella Tsunade, shocking the council, and I know exactly what you bastards have been putting him through. Do you have any proof of relations? Sneered a civilian council member. How do we know this isn't some trick by the demon? How do we know he hasn't corrupted you? The only corruption here is spread by the greed of the civilian council scoff jiraiya tsunade and i are both aware of naruto's situation and we are furious and appalled by this village's treatment of him minato would be ashamed and disgusted he wanted naruto to be seen as a hero and the savior of the village not for him to be abused hated ostracized discriminated against and made a pariah and scapegoat yondame would have wanted began a civilian i raised and trained minato as though he were my own son bella jiraiya don't you dare claim to know what Minato would want better than I do. He entrusted Naruto with a heavy burden and responsibility that none of you can begin to imagine the weight of carrying. People like you disgrace Minato's memory every time you harm, insult, abuse and mistreat Naruto. Effective immediately, Naruto's now under mine and Jiraiya's legal guardianship as we're his family. Asserted Tsunade, her key flaring. About time this happened, agreed Fugaku. Many of the clans have expressed interest in adopting Naruto in your absence. Though I know how inappropriate it would have been if mine did so, for reasons I need not specify. Fair enough. Of course the demon controllers would want their pet demon back, sneered a civilian. I bet the Uchiha were behind the whole thing. Why else wouldn't they have done anything to stop the beast in its rampage? And why else would they always protect the reborn demon fox from his punishment? Before Yami Kitsune decapitated them, Hiruzen turned to the civilians, get out. Mebuki began, but, get out of my sight roared Iruzin before the civilian council were forcibly removed from the building. We weren't on the front lines of the attack because we had orders to evacuate the people to the shelters, and because Donzo was already accusing us of being behind the attack. Clarified Fugaku, in fact, he was so quick to accuse us one might think he was trying to divert suspicion away from himself. That's quite the accusation, Uchiha. Where's your evidence? Asked Donzo. Where's yours for your accusation? The orchestrator had the Sharingan, so does Kakashi Hitake. Yet I don't recall anyone accusing or blaming him. Members of my clan died that night as well. They were found with wounds consistent with tipless Danto blades, and their eyes missing. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you, Donzo team? Seeing where this was going, Hyashi stared at Donzo, activated his Byakugan, then rose to his feet. Donzo has a Sharingan eye under his bandages. In righteous fury as he approached, leaking key, Fugaku slammed Donzo against a wall, pinned him, and reclaimed the stolen eye. How dare you steal the Sharingan? It was in the village's best interests, stated Donzo, stoic. No, Donzo team, it was for your own ambitions and lust for power. Accused Fugaku, all these years, you've kept requesting to induct young Uzumaki into the foundation, your Route 2.0. And now we discover you're in possession of stolen Sharingan eyes. It's quite clear what your intentions have been for both the boy and the eyes you've stolen from the very start. As if you yourself haven't thought about using your visual prowess to control a Jin Chiriki and their tailed beast, Wicked Eye Fugaku. I am neither you nor Madara. And I won't let you harm or use the child as your weapon. Enough! shouted Hiruzen, leaking key. Donzo, you're to return all Sharingan eyes in your possession. Fugaku, please consider the possible long-term repercussions if you were to kill Donzo before doing so. Given the current circumstances, Killing him like this would only make people think he was right. Unhappy but knowing Hiruzen was correct, Fugaku gave a final stare at Donzo before returning to his seat. I don't like this, Lord Hokage. We have dojutsu theft laws, and Donzo's broken them. As Donzo and the elders were forcefully removed from the room, Hiruzen sighed. I hope things don't get out of hand when the rest of your clan finds out. They're about to learn someone with open prejudice against them has murdered an unspecified number of their own, and stolen their Kekegenkai, stated Fugaku. 
They'll be furious and outraged, especially the elders. They may very well see this as the village stabbing us in the back, and launching a preemptive strike against the clan. If the latter, they will undoubtedly wish to retaliate in some fashion. This is going to be so damn troublesome. Groaned Shikaku. Agreed. Later. Interior. Konoha. Uchiha Compound. Meeting Hall. Early evening. As Fugaku informed his clan of the thievery, he felt a chilling presence watching from the shadows. If we don't strike back against the village soon, they'll wipe us out, shouted an elder. We could find the Jin Chiriki, and use our visual prowess to control him so he fights our enemies for us. Suggested another elder. A Sharingan controlling a Baiju is how we all ended up in this situation in the first place. Reminded Fugaku, and none of you are to lay a finger or a genjutsu upon the boy. We're already suspected of being behind one Baiju attack. It would only make matters worse for everyone if we actually caused one. And what would we accomplish if we went through with such a careless plan? Asked Izumi, our own extinction? A civil war sparking a fourth great ninja war? Proving Donzo, and people like him, right? Who asked for your opinion? You half breed trash. Sneered another clan member before a firm hand gripped their shoulder. Apologize to my daughter in law for your disrespect. Now, commanded Fugaku. Later, interior, Konoha, Uchiha compound, Fugaku's house, dining room, evening. How was the academy, Sasuke? asked Mikado, whilst dishing up. It was all right, but fangirls are so annoying, especially that Haruno girl. And I don't really know what to think of Naruto. He's nice enough for an outsider but he always holds back against everyone during sparring. Answered Sasuke, although not as much against teachers who are mean to him. Sometimes the display of one's own power and skill depends on those of their opponent, chimed in Fugaku, and they were likely going all out against him, if they really despise him. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Later, exterior, land of fire, forest, late evening. Yami Kitsune had tracked a handful of Jonin level missing nins who walked in formation with their hostage, a little girl, in the middle. She was gagged. Her wrists and elbows were tied behind her back. She had fair skin, pale eyes and long dark hair, and wore black pants, a tank top and sandals. It was Hanabi Huga. Shadow Mist Jutsu, whispered Yami Kitsune, covering the area in a thick, pitch black mist before he substituted with Hanabi, and eliminated her captors by combining the sunshine and silent killing. When the mist cleared, Yami Kitsune sheathed his sword, turned towards Hanabi, who was on her knees with fear in her eyes. He slowly approached her, knelt down and ungagged her, are you okay, who are you, Yami Kitsune, Anbu Black Ops, answered Yami Kitsune as he severed her bonds, and helped her to her feet, now, let's get going, I'll escort you home, do you even know who I am, a snippy little firecracker, he teased, hey, she indignantly protested before he lifted her into his arms, as if carrying a baby, what the, put me down, I will when I get you home, he dismissed before they vanished in a flash, interior, Konoha, Hyuga compound, Hyashi's house, study, late evening. Appearing out of nowhere, Yami Kitsune gently set Hanabi down on her feet before noticing Hyashi seated at his desk. Rising to his feet as his youngest daughter hugged him, Hyashi smiled, Thank you for saving Hanabi-chan. Happy to help, Hyashi-san, said Yami Kitsune who gestured to Hanabi, Take good care of the little firecracker and Hinata-chan. I shall try my best. Naruto-san. With a sigh, Naruto removed his mask then gave a small smile as Hanabi ran into his arms, you be a good girl, and take care of yourself and your precious people, okay, little firecracker, okay, Naruto Niazan, Naruto planted a kiss upon her forehead, amused, Hyashi smiled, Hinata-chan will be pleased to know you get along with her friend, and you'll need to keep his secret, for Anbu aren't supposed to share their identities, father, I want to be a shinobi even more now, like Hinata Niazan and Naruto Niazan, what about Naruto-kun? Asked Hinata as she walked in to find her Hanabi with a masked Anbu and her father, then hugged her sister, Hanabi-chan. Thank goodness, are you alright? What happened to the kidnappers? Naruto-san happened. He rescued Hanabi-chan, and safely returned her to us. Hanabi-chan seems to have taken Naruto-san as her elder brother. Explained Yashi, he even gave her the endearing nickname of Little Firecracker. Ah, that's so cute. Mused Hinata. Nichan, can I sleep next to you tonight? Asked Hanabi. Of course you can. Nabi-chan, clearing his throat, Yami Kitsune met Hyashi's gaze, if that'll be all, I'll take my leave, Hyashi-san, thank you, Yami Kitsune, that'll be all, Hyashi informed the younger man, take good care of each other, Hyashi-san, Hinata-chan, little firecracker, farewell Yami Kitsune who vanished, a few weeks later, exterior, Konoha, forest, Naruto's campsite, early sunset, traveling with his longtime friend, a red-headed, bearded man approached the campsite, 
What are you doing out here by yourself, kiddo? His companion was a tall, imposing man, with pupilless light brown eyes and no eyebrows, in crimson plated armor and a black, sleeveless, gi, a heat resistant face mask that covered his neck, a conical straw hat with white cloth covering both sides of his face, blacksmith gloves, and armored boots. I'm camping, and cooking my dinner, Roshi of the Lava Release and Han of the Boil Release, stated Naruto, in casual clothes in his natural redhead form as he checked on some salmon he'd been smoking. And who might you be? Asked Han, kind but reserved. Name's Naruto. You're a Nuzumaki, aren't you? Inquired Han, studying the boy's features. Just like both of you. Answered Naruto, earning widened eyes. You're Kushina Emoto's son, aren't you? Inquired Roshi. Narukun, you can trust these two. They're the Jinchuriki for son Goku and Kokuo, and the Uzumaki were as loyal to each other as the Inuzuka. Informed Kara. So, what brings you two so close to Konoha? Wondered Naruto, making two seats for them, with wood style. To the surprise of Han and Roshi, you both look like you've had a long day. Take a load off, and rest a while. Pervy Sage will be back in a minute, and I'm sure he'll want to chat. The Pervy Sage? Asked Roshi, trying not to laugh. Jiraiya of the Sanin. Answered Naruto, making the two older Jin Shuriki laugh as the Sage stepped into view. Later, Interior, Konoha, Forbidden Archives, Vault. Early evening, Mizuki approached the Forbidden Scroll, then found himself unable to move. Appearing, Yami Kitsune executed Mizuki using a shorter, more refined, precise, and compressed lightning blade made of black lightning. Interior, Konoha, Ichiraku Ramen, morning. As he joined blonde Naruto, Shikamaru asked, how's being a Janan on the reserves list going? Oh, if you only knew, Shika, thought Uzumaki who shrugged, I have lots of time to focus on my training, honing my skills and my studies for when I eventually get a team. Sounds exhausting. I've become quite popular with many of the Jonans, Tokubitsu Jonans and Anbu since they're often offering useful advice, tips and suggestions, sometimes even sparring and training with me. Sounds like things are looking up for you. And it's good to know you're doing well. Yeah, I've even been training in Senjutsu. And began Naruto whose eyes widened. That's how I do it. I should have realized that ages ago. Huh? Realized what? Asked Shikamaru. Confused. I can use Sage Chakra to destroy curse marks like the Curse Seal of Heaven. Isn't that the one Orochimaru marks people with? Yep, yeah, and I have a promise to keep. Confirmed Naruto who paid for his meal, then vanished in a sunshine. Shikamaru smiled, I hope whatever you're about to do works, you troublesome Uzumaki. Later, interior, Konoha, Shinobi District, apartment building owned by Naruto, Kurinayanko's loft, bedroom, late morning. As she sat on the bed with Naruto, Anko asked, so, how do you remove the curse mark, Narukun? Well, first I need a clear view of it, replied Uzumaki, age 13. I'm going to use Sage Chakra to purge you of the curse seal. Oh, I'm gonna show you more than my curse mark, she flirtatiously teased as she seductively stripped off her shirt and an alluring purple bra, then jiggled her breasts with her hands. Will you break sexy Anko chans curse now that she's brought her titties out to play? Please, Narukun, as you wish. As his right index and middle finger glowed golden. Naruto, in sage mode, pressed them against her curse mark which dissipated whilst she felt a soothing warmth throughout her body which healed every injury she'd ever taken, and corrected improperly healed ones whilst making her moan and shudder in pleasure. When he finished, she brought him into a close embrace, his face buried in her cleavage, thank you, thank you, thank you, before kissing him, you're the best, Naruto-kun, you're one of my most precious and treasured people, you know, I love you, Anko Haim, I love you too. Narukun, and it's probably weird timing, but you haven't started your seduction and seduction resistance training. Today's your first lesson. Who's in charge of today's lesson? Asked Naruto. Kurin I entered, wearing an alluring crimson dress, emblazoned with a black thorn pattern, that clung snugly to her figure and revealed a generous view of her cleavage, and black nylon stockings. Both myself and Anko chan. You're on your own, Narukun. I'm not helping you resist these sexy vixens, but I'm going to enjoy the show. Informed Kara, through her and Naruto's mental link. Uzumaki turned to Kurinai. Something tells me this will be especially difficult since I wouldn't mind you seducing me. Kurinai giggled. Good to know, Naruto-kun. I have a feeling this'll be a greater challenge than fighting the Yondame Mizukage again. I'll be sure to ask about that later. The next day, Interior, Konoha, Uchiha Compound, Itachi's house, Fugaku's study, morning. Ensuring he and Itachi were in private, Fugaku instructed, My son. You must portray yourself as becoming disillusioned with the clan to create doubt in those pro-insurrection. While I cannot bring myself to shed my family's blood, 
even to protect my godson, I know you will do what you must. If the clan won't call off their plans for a coup d'etat, you and those you can trust to aid you must be the ones to stop those involved. I already know who I can convince to assist me, though I have encountered someone from our clan who was believed dead who I am certain will help if asked. Who is this long lost Uchiha you've encountered? It is not our place to tell Kakashi, but it is Obito who now calls himself Tobi. Though he claims to have encountered a masked man claiming to be Madara Uchiha. Fugaku paled, if Madara is indeed alive, he will want the entire Uchiha clan eradicated. I will face him myself should he come and protect my clan from him or die trying. How will you stand up to his mong Ekyo Sharingan? Asked Itachi, then Fugaku's eyes changed, I see. You have it like Shisui and I? Before his own mong Ekyo activated. Son, don't use those eyes unless absolutely necessary. I've never needed to use mine's abilities, and I've kept it a secret, stated Fugaku as they turned off their Sharingans. I also know your comrade, Yami Kitsune, bears the Rinnegan. He should assist you in the coming battle if it cannot be prevented. He's been here the whole time, stated Itachi, surprising Fugaku, haven't you? Naruto? Appearing out of thin air, Uzumaki deadpanned, I have a code name for a reason, you know. It was supposed to be classified information, I already knew, given I was there when they placed your appearance changing seals. Makes sense, exhaled Naruto, in his redhead form, but I sense intense hidden guilt from you. Something I should be aware of? Yes. A few things that will make you hate the Uchiha as much as Doberama Senju was said to before the founding of the village. And I have some things to return to the Uzumaki and Senju. Naruto raised an eyebrow, I think we should continue this conversation somewhere far away from your clan compound, in case I react impulsively or violently. Also, my tenant's hatred for your clan due to the actions of Madara may be unintentionally sent through her chakra if what you have to tell me causes me to tap into it. Fugaku nodded in agreement, yes. That would be for the best. Do you have anywhere we can go? Before the trio were engulfed in a black nebula. Interior, shadow dimension. Where are we? Inquired Itachi. This is the shadow realm. It's a bit weird. Explained Naruto. Now, let's get down to business. When Fugaka finished confessing his and his clan's sins towards and their betrayal of the Uzumaki clan to Naruto as if he were in a confessional booth, Naruto's killing intent froze both Uchiha as he unleashed a mighty roar of righteous fury while going all the way up to the seven tail cloak while the ground shook. As he returned to base form and dissipated his key, having been in complete control of the Baiju chakra the whole time, Naruto asked, Now I've got that out of my system, shall we go back? Making the two Uchiha face fault, this place is also outside of space and time. No time will have passed, when we return. Interior, Konoha, Uchiha compound, Itachi's house. Fugaku's study, late morning. As he, Itachi and Fugaku returned, Naruto took several storage scrolls, and vanished via sunshine. Now that Naruto and Toto isn't here, tell me, was all of that true, or a very convincing deception to ensure he grows to hate the Uchiha, father? Did a faction of the Uchiha clan really aid in the destruction of Ozoshio, and the eradication of the Uzumaki clan? Questioned Itachi, sternly, as they conversed in a Genjutsu world. Yes. And I've just returned everything the clan took from the Uzumaki as the spoils of victory in the battle to Naruto. Including what Root tried to take, but failed since we killed their detachment after the battle. And yes, it's true when we were kids, the elders of the clan wanted me and Kushina-chan to become romantically involved, so they could gain control of her and the fox later on. Of course she saw right through their plan almost immediately, and beat the entire truth out of me like Tsunade I'm using the eight gates, continued Fugaku, when I finally stood up to our clan's council. They chose to frame Kumo as an alternative method of acquiring the Baijuo. Minato-kun obviously stopped them, but neither of them made any indication they knew it was the Uchiha, not Kumo. Of course, such attempts were never repeated again after that. And we wonder why the village trusts this clan so little, scoffed Itachi. You told me to act as if I were growing disillusioned with this clan. After this little chat, I won't need to pretend. In truth, my own disillusionment with the ways the clan was being managed is why I accepted the role of clan head in the first place. I've done my best to change our clan for the better, but they are as stubborn as the Nara are lazy. Later, exterior, Konoha, Uchiha compound, street, afternoon. Appearances and preconceptions won't tell you anything. Dead Panditachi as he loomed over some punks who were belittling his relationship with Izumi, while a large group had stopped to watch, for instance, You've made the mistake of assuming I'm a patient man. You have that filthy half-breed spreading her legs for you like a common tramp from the red light district. You really think that trash will ever be accepted among us? She's not even a real Uchiha, and will never be as powerful or valuable as a pure-blooded Uchiha, sneered the first punk. Half-breeds have no place in our clan. The clan. The clan. Scoffed Itachi, leaking killing intent, 
you overestimate your abilities, with no idea of the depth of my own, and look at you now. Groveling in the dirt, obsessed with the organization, obsessed with the clan. Obsessed with our lineage, hissed Itachi, disgusted, as he growled, a worthless compulsion that enslaves us. All it does is limit our capabilities, and that in turn leads us to fear what you don't understand. Stop, Itachi-kun, urged Mikido as she appeared before a kunai flew past her face, piercing the center of a Nuchiha crest painted on a wall behind her. Itachi activated his Sharingan, I've had enough of this. There's no hope left for this pathetic clan. The people of this clan are all the same. You focus on the trivial, and lose sight of what's most important. Change is impossible in this fog of ignorance. How can we evolve when regulation's all we've ever known? Rushing over to her eldest son, Mikido closely embraced him. Please calm down, sweetie. Deactivating his Sharingan, Itachi returned the embrace as a tear trickled down his cheek. Forgive me. Mother. There's nothing to forgive, my son. You were merely sharing how you feel, instead of bottling it all up. Assured Mikito and you were sticking up for Izumi-chan. A month later, exterior, Konoha, Uchiha compound, Itachi's house, late evening. Having fought valiantly but in vain, Mikido and Fugaku lay dying at the feet of the masked Madara before he vanished as Itachi, Shisui, Izumi, and Tobi, having completed their part of the mission, arrived on the scene. You three, get out of here. Ordered Itachi. The swirly masked man gave a mock salute, aye aye, captain, and disappeared in a clear vortex while Izumi and Shisui shunshined away. Interior, Konoha, Uchiha compound, clan nursery, late evening. A humanoid figure, half black and half white, Zetsu, half sinisterly and half joyfully smiled down at his victims, the children, before sinking through the ground, proceeding to the bedrooms of his next victims aka more of the clan's children. As she arrived to watch over and guard the little ones, Izumi's eyes widened in horror at the sight, then she shed a tear, no. Interior, Konoha. Uchiha compound, assembly hall, late evening. Having taken down a large number of the would-be Uchiha insurgents with the help of shadow clones, Yami Kitsune dispelled them, sensed a disturbance, and thought, something's wrong, there's more amongst the dead than there should be. Well, it wasn't our little pest control team's doing. We had specific targets, this is an order 66. Replied Kara. Yami Kitsune vanished into thin air as though he were never there, heading for the rendezvous point where Izumi and Shisui were waiting for him. Exterior. Konoha, Uchiha compound, Itachi's house, late evening. Itachi shed a tear as he took a moment to mourn his parents, then heard running footsteps, Sasuke, big brother. What happened? Panicked Sasuke, who could do this? Before noticing the blood-stained sword in Itachi's hand, you. Why? Mong Ekyo Sharingan active, Itachi made a choice, Tsukuyomi. Interior, Konoha, Shinobi district, Naruto's apartment building, Kuranayananko's loft, bedroom, Early morning, Naruto, in black boxers, and Anko, in purple lingerie, conversed on the bed. Do you like these, Narukun? Anko asked as she jiggled her large breasts, with her hands. They're a part of you, so I love them just like I love you. Naruto answered, sincerely and innocently, before hugging her. Ah, you're so sweet. How did you find a way to say you loved my tits without sounding like a pervert? I was only telling the truth. Anko lay flat on her back. Will you please massage my tits for me, Narukun? Anything for my future wife. He replied, making her blush as he tenderly and gently fondled, caressed and massaged her breasts, earning a relaxed sigh and soft moan. Ooh, still planning to marry me, Narukun? She teased. Of course I am, my fair Onko Haim. And you told me you were all mine when I was older, that day in the barracks, when I first joined Anbu. So it sounded like you were all for it even before I asked. Yep. That was right before you told me you wanted to lose your virginity in a threesome with me and Nai-chan. Speaking of, as she entered, in crimson lingerie, Kurenai brought his hands to her waist, happy birthday, Narukun, then passionately kissed him, it's time for your present, now you're sweet 16. Then Sume entered, in exotic black lingerie, alongside Yugao, in black and purple lingerie. Standing up, Anko, Yugao, Sume and Kurenai seductively danced and stripped, whilst feeling each other up and kissing till they were both naked in all their glory, then gave low bows and a twirl. Naruto blushed, that was amazing, just like all of you. Oh, we're not finished yet, love. Assured Kurenai, who sat next to Uzumaki, and tugged on his boxers, the next part of your present requires these to come off. As they removed his boxers which they cast aside, revealing a hard, 12-inch, dick, the four women were surprised by his size. As your gift, we're all yours for the long weekend, Naruto-sama. Seductively said Gurunai, gently stroking his dick, 
we hope you'll take full advantage of our services so you can fully experience all we have to offer you. And so you can live out all of your naughty, sexy, kinky and intimate dreams and fantasies with us, Naruto-sama. And that we perform and please to your satisfaction, Naruto-sama. Added Onko. Show this wild woman you're an alpha by turning me into your submissive bitch. Seductively chimed in Sume. And make this kitten purr. Added Yugao. You're the best birthday gift ever. Mused Uzumaki before the fun began. A month later. Exterior. Konoha. Streets. Early evening. Cornered in a dead-end alley by a hateful mob. Naruto. In a navy v-neck shirt. Black Konoha headband. Black jeans. Weapons pouch on his right thigh. And shinobi sandals. With his hair blonde. Asked. What? You never should have lived this long, you demon. Shouted a villager brandishing a knife. Firstly, I'm not a demon, I'm a shinobi of Konoha. Secondly, am I supposed to care about your opinion? Bluntly asked Naruto. The wind carries your treasonous voice too far on this quiet night. And you do understand it's against the law to attack a clan heir? Die, QB brat. Shouted another villager who charged at Naruto with a kitchen knife which was deflected by a kunai. Raising his hand, Naruto acrobatically leapt behind the mob and made a pushing gesture, air bomb. Sending them all crashing into the dead end's wall. As Naruto's outfit changed to that of his Anbu uniform while his hair turned red, he trapped them in place with wood style. Naruto drew his katana, secret art, phantom mist jutsu. Before he cut them down in the blink of an eye whilst veiled in shadows and fog so intense not even the Byakugan could have seen through it. As the bodies were destroyed by his Anbu squad who arrived, Naruto exhaled, I owe you a drink for cleaning up the mess. I want some dango while you're at it. Replied Onko. Of course, Onko Haim, honey. I know how much you love those sweet balls. Especially when I treat you to mine, and the long, hard shaft you love sucking so much. Even though your experienced hands get all sticky in the process, teased Naruto, horrifying the present company except for Onko, Tsume, Rin, Izumi and Yu Gao who almost pissed themselves laughing. I know a few recipes for dango, but I make candy cane style skewers to put the dessert ones on. Explained Naruto who snickered, what did you think I was talking about? That sounded all kinds of sexual, sighed Yamato. You're a pervert, Tenzo. It takes one to know one. Lamely countered the older of the two wood style users. Tenzo just confirmed himself a pervert, teased Kakashi. This coming from the man who reads smut in public, countered Tsume. You should read some of Naruto-kun's books. Kitsune's heart is much better than Jiraiya's Icha Icha series. Later, Interior, Konoha, Shinobi District. Naruto's apartment building, Naruto's loft, bedroom, morning. Happily waking up in each other's arms after a long night of passionate lovemaking, Naruto and Anko kissed before admiring each other's bodies. With a devious smirk as she saw he was hard, Anko stroked Naruto's member, Can your sexy Anko-chan get shower sex before breakfast? As you wish, Anko Haim. A year later, exterior, land of rain, rendezvous point, early afternoon. Arriving invisibly, Naruto, age 17 in his uniform, saw an army of mercenaries, shinobi and root led by Hanzo of the salamander holding a blue-haired woman hostage. Jiraiya and two figures in black robes with red clouds stood across from them. Hanzo. You will release Konan right now, or so help me began one of the cloaked figures. Yo what, Yahiko of the Akatsuki? Deadpan Hanzo. Then there was a yellow flash as Konan was suddenly free, standing next to her friends, whilst Hanzo's allies dropped dead. Naruto appeared in front of Jiraiya and his companions, with his back to them. You who use the flying Raijin, step forward and identify yourself. Requested Hanzo. Removing his mask, Naruto glared with his Rinnegan. I am Naruto Uzumaki Senju. I hereby christen you Raijin's wrath. I shall remember you, declared Hanzo before Naruto cut him down in a flash, severed and sealed away his head, and burnt the rest of his body whilst blowing away his poisonous gas with wind style. Naruto turned towards his grandfather. Lord Hokage and Fire Lord Zuko personally sent me to aid you. The Fire Lord and Hokage sent you? Why would they help us? Asked Konan. Isn't all of this the Leaf's fault? Only Donzo Shimura is responsible. He neither acts for nor speaks for anyone in Konoha or the Land of Fire. He's a war criminal in the eyes of both. So, what are you going to do about this Donzo? Asked Yahiko. I have a few ideas. In the meantime, I must return to Konoha. However, Summons will act as our messengers to inform you and Jiraiya Sensei when Donzo's been dealt with. Answered Naruto before he vanished in a flash. Exterior, Land of Fire, Konoha, Anbu Outpost, Evening. As 30 root agents appeared, they drew their tipless tintos, and moved to attack Yami Kitsune before being cut down in a flash. Then the corpses were turned to mere grains of ash. Captain Yami Kitsune, are you out of your mind? Asked Iviki as he arrived moments prior. You just killed Anbu personnel. 
Donzo's route and the foundation have been outlawed by personal decree of Fire Lord Zuko himself, along with the other lords and daimyos. Furthermore, anyone operating under their banners or orders from Donzo Shimura are to be considered an enemy of the Land of Fire and its allies, and a traitor, replied Yami Kitsune who handed over a document. Donzo would never let such a decree become public knowledge. I was personally summoned to retrieve the documents by the Fire Lord. Root's been trying to intercept me the entire way back. The other feudal lords already know, and I'm sure the other cage will have heard from them by now. You really are a headache. You know that, right? Asked Iviki. I'm a post-sex headache, quipped Yami Kitsune. The end result of a damn good time. Earning amused expressions from his masked comrades. Kara, threw her mental link to Naruto burst into laughter. As he arrived, Hiru's impaled. I take it I'm about to get a lot more paperwork. After making sure the good news about Root and the Foundation spreads, I'm going to need you to do an extended mission under the guise of a Jinan. My boy, Yami Kitsune frowned behind his mask, that's pointless, and you know it. I could just as easily do the mission under the guise of a Chunin. If you're about to do what I think you are, we'll be putting you on Sasuke Uchiha and Sakura Haruno's squad. So the little pink banshee, the entitled flight risk, and Naruto Uzumaki are supposed to be on the same squad? What unfortunate soul are you torturing by making them the captain of the sticking time bomb? Kakashi Hitake, since Shisui and Izumi haven't returned from their mission yet, I hope you're prepared for the older Pink Banshee's reaction to Naruto being on her brat squad. It'll include another attempt to kill Naruto Uzumaki, and at least one more illegal meeting to vote for his execution without the clan heads or you being informed. It'll be tomorrow morning since there's several meetings and ceremonial clan traditions taking place, we will be ready to handle it. I've learned from my source that your old teammates and Donzo will be the ones residing over the meeting, with Root and Foundation acting as its security. However, Donzo plans to have Naruto's execution faked so he can brainwash him into his own personal Jin Churiki Winter Soldier. We will never allow that. Interior, Konoha, Donzo's office, early evening. Realizing something was blocking him from using his voice, chakra, and stolen eyes, Donzo's eyes widened in dread upon seeing Yami Kitsune and his Rinnegan. As time around him slowed, Naruto decapitated Donzo, ripped out and destroyed all of the stolen Sharingans, then sealed the corpse in a scroll, and numerous files into others. Interior, undisclosed location, bounty collection office, early evening morgue. Naruto dumped Donzo's head on a table before receiving a handsome payment for the bounty, then vanished. Later, exterior, Konoha, academy, training ground, early morning. As his favorite former student arrived long before everyone else, Iruka informed, OK, Naruto, time for the clone jutsu. Just gotta do one thing first, said Naruto who switched off his appearance altering seals, making Iruka's eyes widen. Feeling an imminent headache, Umino scratched the back of his head, when you're ready. Before Uzumaki proceeded to create hundreds of wood, stone, grass, leaf, sand, dirt, mud, iron, crystal, lightning, ice, water and shadow clones. So, do I pass, again? Only an idiot wouldn't pass you after this. I didn't know some of those existed. As the elemental and shadow clones dispelled, Naruto did one last hand sign, clone jutsu. Before every inch of the premises exterior, outdoor furniture, playgrounds, trees, walls and rooftops included, was occupied by basic clones. Iruka sweat dropped, why didn't you do that during your first graduation? when you were seven. Because the villagers would react violently. You know what they're like towards me because of my tenant. Also, I have too much chakra to use basic clone jutsu without creating enough of them to populate a village. Troublesome, deadpan Shikamaru who approached, with Choji, Anko, Tenten, and Shino, taking the test again when you've already graduated sounds like such a drag. You won our bet, Naruto-kun, said Anko who pulled Naruto close to her, and kissed him with feral ferocity until they were out of breath. That was nice. Anko-chan. It was amazing. Well, it is a kiss with Naruto. Muse Tenten, and there's the second part of the bet we need to make good on. Accepting a black headband from Iruka, Naruto informed, I already have one of these, but it's always nice to have a spare. I'll be back later to hear the team placements. Before he, Tenten and Anko vanished. Troublesome Uzumaki. Muse Shikamaru. Later, interior, Konoha, Shinobi Academy, classroom, late morning, entering. Naruto wore black hanbu pants, a three-quarter sleeved armor mesh shirt which clung to his muscles, a dark crimson, short-sleeved, howry with black flames at the bottom, black fingerless gloves, combat boots, a belt, and black vambraces engraved with a red senju crest. Shuriken and kunai holsters were worn on either thigh. An obsidian bladed katana, with a small black suba, bearing the Uzumaki swirl and the kanjis for maelstrom and shadow engraved, in orange-red, 
just above the suba, was strapped to his back, as was a scroll. He wore a black hapuri with a crimson leaf symbol engraved on a black plate, instead of the standard headband. A chain pendant bearing the Uzumaki coat of arms with a golden swirl hung around his neck, as did Hashirama's necklace. Naruto's Rinnegan was active, his complexion was fair and lordly, and his Uzumaki red hair was on full display. Who is that? Wondered some of the students, I've never seen him before. Is he a transfer from another class? Or an exchange student from another village? Maybe he's been privately trained? Suggested another student, I hear they sometimes assign privately trained ninja to spy on suspected traitors. Or maybe he's someone's apprentice. He's probably here to make sure Ima boy doesn't turn traitor, quietly whispered a graduate. My folks say to never trust a Nuchiha. After Madara and Itachi, it's easy to see why. Naruto-kun looks amazing. Thought Hinata, Sasuke. Exhaled Naruto, in a deeper, calmer, and clearer voice, as he sat a few rows away from the emo, and opened a book on advanced seals, techniques and jutsu. Who the hell are you? Asked Tachiha, confused. Naruto Uzumaki, what the? How? Why do you look so different? I was wearing identity concealing seals instead of using a henge or genjutsu to change my look. When did you even learn sealing? I started learning as a child. Why? The Uzumaki clan invented the art of sealing. I wanted to live up to and honor their legacy. Their affinity for and mastery of it was legendary. So much so that Tsuna, Iwa, Kiri, Kumo, Ame, and all of their allied minor villages combined the full might of their military forces to invade our little country and wipe us out when my mother was a child. Even a rogue division of Konoha Shinobi, specifically Danzo's root and the Uchiha clan, were involved. Mum only survived because she was here in Konoha at the time of the attack. So basically my clan got off easy by comparison? Yours was only a few hundred in numbers at the most, and the Uzumaki clan numbered in the tens of thousands, so yes. Also, your home is mostly undamaged, but Hososhio was left in ruins. I know because I've been to the latter. Give me that sword, I'm a Nuchiha elite. If it's powerful, it should be M began Sasuke who was punched in the throat followed by the rib cage then the gut, caught by the hair and thrown into the chalkboard at the front of the room as everyone went silent. Your kind is unworthy of even touching an Uzumaki or Senju blade in any way that isn't dying upon it, you filthy Uchiha scum. Your kind is little more than arrogant trash, thieves and traitors. Growled Naruto, with venom upon saying Uchiha. Trash? Scum? Growled Sasuke as he got to his feet. How dare you call the Uchiha such things? Because it's true. And we all know it. The only Uchiha to make an impact on our history is Madara, a traitor who's tried inciting civil wars and coup d'etats. He tried to destroy Konoha because he didn't get chosen as the first Hokage, reminded Uzumaki, and because an already betrothed Mito Uzumaki rejected him when he proposed. How the hell would you know something that specific? I have my ways. It's said that he also orchestrated a civil war between the mostly peaceful Uzumaki before leading the enemy nations against them. Where did you get the headband, Naruto? Asked Kiba. It's pretty cool, and that's a badass sword. They belong to my mother, Kushina. They really suit you. Thanks, Kiba. You've been holding back on us. Just how strong are you? You'll see soon enough. Mused Uzumaki, noticing a faint but lingering scent. Kiba grinned, you got laid, didn't you? Naruto's only response was a small smile. Why do you wear the Senju coat of arms, Naruto? Asked Shino, changing the subject. Princess Tsunade is my grandmother making me a descendant of both the Uzumaki clan and the Senju clan. Explained Naruto, however, the Senju clan still has many enemies who would love to see its last son slain. Someone felt it was safer to give me the Uzumaki name despite them having several nations full of enemies. Also, most of the villagers hate me so taking the Senju name sooner could have caused problems for Grandma Tsunade. I understand. Naruto, in a seat far away from Sasuke put away his book before making a shadow clone dressed in an orange t-shirt and blue jeans with his previously short blonde hair and blue eyes, and made it sit next to Sasuke. Uchiha raised an eyebrow at this before Ino and Sakura rushed in, arguing in the process. Ignoring the bickering duo, clone Naruto waited. Naruto Baka, you fucking stupid idiot, you're in my way of sitting next to Sasuke-sama. Now move! Screeched Sakura, getting everyone's attention, before she moved to punch him. Quick as lightning! Clone Naruto turned to her, cancelled the henge, caught and bent back the wrist of her oncoming fist, forcing her to her knees, slapped her face, and stared her dead in the eyes. I was here first, you know. Dismissed Clone Naruto, now shut your filthy mouth, and stop screaming like a banshee before I rip out your vocal cords. Since when do you look like that? Doesn't matter, you'll never be cool like Sasuke, and you'll never be useful like Akamaru. Countered Clone Naruto, earning a bark of agreement from the huge dog whilst everyone except for Sakura, Sasuke, and Shino, 
laughed, Clone Arto warned, get that temper under control, and learn some discipline before you get yourself killed, you pathetic excuse of a wannabe Jinan, and if you try using me as a punching bag again, you'll regret it, you annoying, shallow, gold digging brat, yeah, right. Scoffed Haruno who found herself gagged by her own headband, barefoot, in her pink bra and panties, and tied with her arms above her head, face up on the table, in the middle of the room, where Ino sat. As Naruto's clone dispelled, Sasuke sighed, thank you for shutting her up. Uzumaki grinned, my pleasure. Before adding the muting jutsu to Sakura for good measure. Naruto-kun, where did you get those ropes? Asked Ino. They're the same one Ziruka uses for runaway students. Great job on the knots. They're very thorough. She's not going anywhere until someone frees her because she can't do the hand signs for the escape jutsu. There's also a chakra blocking seal on her to prevent her from using it for a set duration of time. Well, I intend to make good use of that, evilly mused Ino. FYI, I love your new look, Naruto. I'm trying desperately not to undress you with my eyes. Thanks. With a mischievous smirk, Ino undid the clip of Sakura's bra, which was at the front, exposing Haruno's petite breasts for all to see. Four heads got her tits out for us. Kiba Wolf whistled at the sight, good things come in small packages, like your dick. Quipped Sai, earning chuckles as he started sketching. Everyone except Naruto, Shino, Sasuke, Choji, Hinata and Shikamaru looked, for varying amounts of time, as Ino had some fun with the helpless Banshee. Should we leave you two alone, so you have some privacy while your fun gets naughtier? Or do you want someone to get in on the action? Or do you want to be tied down beside her, somewhere a little more comfortable? While someone plays with both of you? Asked Naruto, all too casually yet innocently whilst looking up from his book as his natural blue eyes met Ino's. Cheeks flushed as her hand slipped into the front of Sakura's undies. Ino giggled, those are tempting suggestions. That's your cue to get in on the action, Sasuke, joked Kiba. Pass, dismissed Sasuke with a cold stare. Not into the ladies, huh? That explains so much. I never said I was began the emo. Kiba held his hands up. Hey, I ain't judging. We like what we like. Shut up, Ino-chan, make sure her bra is back on, and your hands are out of her filthy little fuckhole when Irukani is and arrives. Advised Uzumaki, earning stunned expressions and awkward silence. Who taught you to call it that? Snickered Ino as she washed her hands. I had the pleasure of learning sex ed from Anko-chan. I'm sure Inoiki mentioned her, since they worked together. Oh, Kami, that must have been traumatic. No, Seeing Mitre Guy's Colgate smile in the sunset Genjutsu is traumatic. How do you know my dad? He's my therapist, and Kami knows I need one sometimes. Did you always have that dojutsu? Asked Sasuke. Yes, replied Naruto. Hiding an awakened bloodline like this one from the public was annoying. I guess if I had my Sharn gone awakened, I'd want to show them to the world too. Learning techniques for yourself instead of just copying them with a Sharn gun will make them more effective. Is that so? Take away the Sharn gun along with everything they've ever copied with it, from one of the greatest ninjutsu masters in the Uchiha clan, and what's left. So you're saying without the Sharingan, the Uchiha are useless? No, that's your conclusion. What you'd have is someone whose reputation is well earned by their own skill. What was the Uzumaki clan known for, again? Their invention and mastery of sealing. Naturally extremely high and potent chakra reserves. Adamantine chains, and accelerated healing. Naturally high resistance to genjutsu. Immunity to so far all illnesses, toxins and poisons, superhuman life force, perception, reflexes and dexterity, prolonged lifespan and slower aging, and a rich history and lore that doesn't involve technique theft, betraying their allies, inciting wars, or spawning psychopaths like Madara. Touche. FYI, don't ever try to steal my clan weapons, or anything else from them. If you attempt to take mine, or withhold anything stolen from my clans by the Uchiha, I'll kill you and take them back by any methods necessary. The civilian council won't like that. Oh, I'll kill them too. HN, someone's woken up on the dark side. Grunted Sasuke before he reached for his throat. Channeling his inner Sith Lord, Naruto raised his hand in a gripping gesture, strangling Uchiha without touching him, then telekinetically threw him into a neighboring wall, but not hard enough to send him through it, earning shocked looks. What the hell was that? Asked Sasuke as he caught his breath. As he hedged into the form of Sidious, Naruto answered. The dark side of the force is a pathway to many abilities, some considered to be unnatural. Is it possible to learn such powers? Not from a Jedi. Replied Naruto who dropped the hand as Sasuke returned to his seat. Noticing Ino was reading one of his novels, Naruto asked, enjoying the series? Ino nodded, yeah, it's my favorite. Would you believe me if I told you I'm the author, for real? That's really awesome, Naruto. Mused Yamanaka. Yeah, and if you're ever taking a peek inside my mind. 
you'll probably find out just how much of it has actually happened to me. Who's the kitten in the clouds based on? An old friend. Interior, Kumo, loft, bedroom. The beautiful two-tailed cat Jinchuriki sneezed. Kitten, Naruto-kun must be thinking about you. Maybe he's fantasizing about tearing off your clothes, tying down your naked body, making you purr, moan in pleasure, and scream his name as he has his way with you, purred Matatabi, and claims you as his mate while you have heavenly say. Tabi, gasped Yugito. Interior, Konoha, Shinobi Academy, Classroom, Late Morning. Iruka entered to see his students doing their own things. It feels strange seeing Naruto as a redhead after the whole blonde disguise, thought Iruka who asked, do I even want to know why Sakura is tied up? It's her own fault, yawned Shikamaru, troublesome girl. I believe it was Horuno team's idea of an early birthday present for Dickless team, but he clearly didn't want it or her, said Sai, earning a scowl from Sasuke which he countered with a creepy smile making everyone sweat drop. Okay, everyone, team assignments. Team 7, led by Kakashi Hitake, will be Sasuke Uchiha, began Iruka who continued, Sakura Haruno, earning a muted squeal of excitement, then finished, and Naruto Uzumaki. I'm doomed. Thought Sakura, not Haruno, anyone but her. Thought Sasuke, looking up from his book, Naruto deadpanned, really? They're putting two trauma cases on a squad with the definition of a useless fangirl? Come again? Asked Iruka. This is a catastrophe waiting to happen, and you know it. Also, three dojutsu wielders in one squad puts a bigger target on our backs than spandex leotards as a team uniform. Exterior, Konoha, training ground, morning. A man and teenage boy, with matching bull haircuts, bushy eyebrows, green spandex leotards, and red headbands worn like belts, sneezed at the same time. Lee, my most youthful student, it seems that we've either caught a cold, or someone quite possibly my eternal rival, is talking about us. Interior, Konoha, Shinobi Academy, Classroom, Late Morning. Sasuke looked at Izumaki, Trauma Cases? The council never gave you any forms of mental health support, guidance, rehab, or counseling after your clan's massacre, did they? No, they didn't. That's because the civilian council doesn't care about you or how the massacre affected you. They blocked every attempt to get you the help you needed. They only care about gaining power, prestige, wealth and influence. All they want is the Sharingan and to take the Uchiha fortune for themselves, especially the Horuno family. They couldn't care less about any form of your health. And how are you traumatized? Naruto carefully elaborated, since I was born on the night of the Kyuubi attack, with whiskers which could be a bloodline trait for all I know, the villagers think I'm Kyuubi in human form. There is no logic to such a belief, observe Shino. I suspect the abuse they've subjected you to as a result of such ignorance has affected your personality and chakra control. You're hiding your true appearance and power before your graduation supports this hypothesis, I'd say the same, but it's too troublesome. Thought Shikamaru. Blinded and consumed by their fear, grief, bitterness, anger and hatred, the villagers have been projecting it all onto me, continued Uzumaki. The civilian council keeps calling for my death because they're stupid enough to believe such obvious lies, even though I'm a clan heir. This morning was their latest call for it being put to vote, completely illegally by the way. It almost passed because the shinobi clan heads and the Hokage were delayed by other meetings. Fortunately, the Hokage and all of the shinobi clan heads, including my grandparents, Tsunade Senju and Jiraiya Sensei, the latter being my appointed Uzumaki clan rep, arrived just in time earning horrified looks before he shot an icy stare towards Sakura. What? Asked Sakura, nervous as she was given back her voice. Why are you looking at me like I just killed your puppy? Your mother's the one who called for this morning's vote on executing me. Your mother has tried to have me, a legitimate and confirmed clan heir, killed countless times because she believes those lies which were spread by a psychopath named Donzo Shimura. Donzo? Gasped Hiruga. That scum is a traitor to our village and nation. He's the accomplice and ally of several high-profile criminals, despots, and fugitives. To name a few, the tyrannical warlord Hanzo of the Salamander in Ame, the crime lord and business magnate Gato, Suna's missing Ninsasari of the Red Sand, and Konoha's very own Orochimaru of the Sanin. Also, he's been supporting the bloodline purges in Kiri in exchange for test subjects for his experiments, and children with bloodlines to induct into his outlawed Rudin Foundation. He very recently tried to have the Fire Lord and his family killed as well. Oh, after a minute for everyone to calm down. Iruka informed, teammate will be Kiba Inuzuka, Hinata Hyuga and Shino Aburama led by Kurin Ayuhi. Earning smiles. Naruto smiled in approval as he kept reading, you have one of the best Jonin in the village as your sensei. She'll take good care of you as your mentor, but Kiba better keep his hormones in check or he'll regret it. Kurin Ai-chan's best friends are his mother, his sister, 
Yuga Uzuki and Onko Midarashi. And Team 10 will be yet another Inoshikacho formation, Deadpan Shikamaru, which leaves us with Asuma Sarutobi. Yes. Confirmed Iruka, now will one of you please untie Sakura, so she can get dressed? Uck, fine. Groaned Naruto who did a hand sign before the pink girl vanished. Appearing on the unsuspecting Sasuke's lap, face first, the unbound Sakura blushed bright red as her face hit his crotch, then she got up before tightly hugging the emo, making him struggle to breathe. Get the hell off of me! Snarled Sasuke before Sakura forced herself into a kiss with him. Sasuke broke free of her embrace, pushed her off of him, and moved seats. Wait, Sasuke-sama. Fuck me. Let me have your babies. Let the Harunos take the Uchiha fortune and bloodline for ourselves. Screamed Sakura, losing all traces of respect from her peers, whilst the scene was recorded by a well-placed and hidden video camera. Troublesome. Deadpan Naruto, earning a laugh from Shikamaru, Kiba and Choji whilst every self-respecting girl in the room seethed at the pink banshee. FYI, Sakura, you looked better all tied up, teased Uzumaki, it makes you less of a public safety hazard. Shut up, muttered Sakura blushing as she got dressed. The rest of us can also concentrate when you can't talk, since we won't hear you ranting about how you'll take Sasuke's virginity from him against his will. You're just jealous because everyone else is better and smarter than you. You're just another Baka orphan. Screeched Haruno, earning several face palms and eye rolls from everyone with a brain. Shut the fuck up, you pathetic, useless, flat piece of trash, shouted Hinata, earning stunned expressions. Everyone watch your language, Bella de Iruka, were you given questions so complex you had to break down and simplify them for Iruka sensei before he could grade them, Pinky? Asked Naruto, no, you were given questions a preschooler could answer. Shikamaru yawned, sounds like a drag. Getting stuck on the same squad as the gold digging banshee with the abuse fetish and kink is what'll be a drag. Replied Uzumaki, I don't have an abuse fetish, you idiot. Screeched Sakura, then why do you touch your crotch when you're treating people like crap? Deadpan Naruto who pointed downwards, making Haruno blush as she noticed her hand was rubbing between her legs. The entire class erupted into laughter whilst many of the students blushed. Naruto inquired, Iruka sensei, did the civilian council try to sabotage the chances of me graduating, and my education here? Yes, they tried all the time. They were determined to get you removed from the academy, and barred from the shinobi program entirely. You would have been on the active roster with a team when you were seven if they weren't meddling with your files. Answered Umino, shocking the class. I was put on the reserves list anyway, remember? Right. That slipped my mind. Interior, Konoha, Academy, Classroom, Late Morning. When Asuma entered with an unlit cigarette in his mouth, Naruto, sitting in the front row, away from the emo and banshee, threw a sleek dart, as thin as a senbone, with two small fins which pierced the cigarette, and carried it into the no-smoking sign on a nearby wall. You know the rules, Asuma-san. Chuckled Naruto who activated his Rinnegan, no smoking, or Iruka sensei will have you in detention. Asuma nodded, and closed his packet before taking his team with him. As Kurunai arrived, Naruto smiled warmly at the Genjutsu mistress, morning, Naiheim. The crimson-eyed Kunoichi beamed as their eyes met, good morning to you too, Narukun. It's lovely to see you again, darling, and as always, it's a blessing from Kami to gaze upon your graceful beauty with my own eyes, my fair and lovely lady. Mused Uzumaki, whilst the genin stared at him. Missed you too, my dear Naru-kun, chuckled Yuhi who escorted her new students away. Bored, Uzumaki looked at Sasuke and Sakura, let's at least make an effort to succeed as a unit. We'll need to use teamwork for the foreseeable future. Work with you? Scoffed Haruno, why would me and my Sasuke-kun ever work with you? I'm not yours, trash, snapped Sasuke, and like he said, we're not going to make any progress as ninja if we refuse to cooperate with each other. Wow. You're so smart, Sasuke-kun. Squealed Sakura, making both boys cover their ears. Turning to the redhead, Sasuke muttered, Literally all I did was agree with you, and she's giving me the credit. Are you really surprised? Deadpan Uzumaki. No, but it's so annoying. Checking the time, Naruto called. You can come in now. Before the door slid open, revealing Kakashi's gravity-defying silver hair and masked face. My first impression. I don't feel like telling you. Shrugged Hatake. Oh, and nice coat, Naruto. My sensei had one just like it so I feel nostalgic. I can introduce you to my tailors, and have them make you one, in exchange for foregoing the mask when we're not on missions. Offered Naruto who shunshined in front of his sensei. Can we negotiate other options? You could buy me dinner at Ichiraku's, all I can eat. My poor wallet, gasped Kakashi. More like your poor bank account. Replied Uzumaki, 
making Kakashi faint dramatically into his arms before the two of them shunt Shind away. Where the hell did they go? Asked Sakura before noticing her obsession leaving, Sasuke-kun, wait for me. A few minutes later, exterior, Konoha, academy, rooftop, late morning. Seated separately as Sakura and Sasuke finally found Uzumaki and Hitake, they began introductions. I'm Kakashi Hitake. I have no desire to tell you my likes or dislikes. My hobbies. I have lots of hobbies. Goals? Hmm. My dreams? I have a couple of those, vaguely summarized Kakashi. You rehearse that? mused Naruto, and you've just volunteered to go next, little brother. My full name is Naruto Uzumaki Senjunami Kaze, began Naruto, shocking Uchiha and Haruno, my hobbies and likes are only shared with my friends and my precious people. I hate many things, many people, and many types of people. My dreams and my goals are none of your business. Sakura squealed, I'm Sakura Haruno, and I love shopping, when people buy me things, going to expensive places, and money. Meeting people of status, and getting my way. Going to the orphanage with mum to mock the orphans and cut back their funding since they're worthless wastes of money and resources. Getting my hair done, getting discounts on what I buy, and Sasuke-kun. My dream is to marry Sasuke-kun, have his children, and take the Uchiha fortune for my family. I hate being low on money, getting dirty and sweaty, breaking my nails, not getting my way, how bossy my parents are, Ino Pig, Saibaka, and Naruto Baka. Uzumaki gripped his hilt as a nonverbal threat. Uck. This gold digging trash is dead weight. Thought Sasuke, a murderous glare directed at Haruno. She'll get herself killed, thought Hatake, bored, and at this rate, it'll be Naruto or Sasuke that kills her. Maybe I should make that a wager in the betting pool. I am Sasuke Uchiha, the emo introduced, I hate many things, and don't like anything I care to mention. My goal. My ambition is to restore my clan, and obtain the power I need to. Kill Itachi? That's a selfish reason. Scoffed Naruto. What do you know about power? Snarled Uchiha. I know that with great power comes great responsibility, and there's always a cost. As his eyes widened in alarm, Kakashi Barrel rolled out of the way as Mitomite Guy, Guy appeared on the rooftop. Startled, Sakura screamed while Sasuke jumped to his feet, but Naruto didn't even blink. Hey, Guy Ni Ikan? Greeted Naruto as he closed his book, I take it that arrogant Tuli you call Neji team, as well as respectable shinobi like the indomitable spirited Rock Lee and the lovely angel of weaponry, Tenten Chan are coming to, watch your tone, whoever you are, hissed Neji as he arrived, or I will make you suffer, suffer? scoffed Naruto who rose to his feet, and stared deep into Neji's Byakugan eyes with his Renegan, making the Huda recoil, what would you know of pain and suffering, he's sorry, interjected Tenten as she appeared, and looked into Naruto's eyes, what's your name, handsome, Tenten wore a white Chi Pao style top with red trimmings, form fitting black three quarters length shinobi pants, a utility pouch on her left thigh, a headband, and black sandals. Stepping away from Neji, Naruto gently took Tenten's right hand in his, and kissed the back of its palm before gazing into her chocolate eyes as his eyes reverted to blue. Naruto Uzumaki Senjunami Kaze at your service, my fair lady. And to whose treasured acquaintance do I have the honor of making? The brunette Kunoichi blushed, Tenten, then she eyed his hilt, may I see your sword? As you wish. Obliged Naruto who unsheathed his blade, and held it flat, horizontally, in his hands. Resisting the urge to drool, Tenten was in awe of such magnificent craftsmanship, this sword was wielded by Kushina the Red Death, Uzumaki Senju during the last war, then she inquired, where did you get her sword? She is my mother, you know. Tenten gave kitten eyes, I'm sorry, for a moment I thought you might have stolen it. Naruto smoothly replied, I didn't steal the sword, but if you'll please allow me the privilege of stealing a kiss, I'll forgive you, Denheim making Tenten blush whilst the present company was speechless. Sheathing his sword for him, Tenten leaned in and tenderly kissed Naruto on the lips whilst closely embracing him. Guy and Lee did a happy dance at the sight while Sasuke rolled his eyes, and Kakashi gave an eye smile. Sakura tried and failed miserably in flirting with Neji who brutally rejected her. As their lips parted, Naruto gently caressed Tenten's flushed cheek, and admired her facial features. You're as adorable as a panda when you smile like that. Especially with your cute little buns. Do you like pandas? Asked Tenten, mesmerized by his blue eyes as she stroked his left cheek's whiskers with one hand. They're my favorite, Tenheim, Naruto replied. They're my favorite too, but you're the only one I've ever let call me panda nickname since I know you're being sweet, not mean. Foxes are my second favorite, mused Tenten, and I definitely want to see you more often than I have been lately, handsome. As a rose appeared out of thin air, Naruto presented it to Tenten who accepted it along with a kiss when their hands joined. You used to be blonde in public and a redhead in private, chuckled Tenten, 
And it's been a while, Narukun. I figured I'd properly introduce myself now I'm stepping out of the shadows. Thanks for going along with it. Well, you were being charming, and I've never heard your full name before. I had to make sure there weren't two of you. The only time there's more than one of me is when I clone myself. I knew Zamaki, Tenten mused. You're a godsend of a kisser, Narukun. Can we kiss again sometime? Tenheim, you already know you can kiss me anytime you like. Assured Naruto. How many girlfriends are you hooking up with? Asked Sakura, irritated. Sasuke interjected, not that I was paying attention, but as far as I know, he has yet to call anyone his girlfriend. Speaking of girlfriends, can I be yours? Asked Haruno. No, because you're a shallow, gold-digging, annoying brat with little to no self-control. A fangirl who disgraces and devalues the titles of Shinobi and Kunoichi. A burden that will most likely get yourself and others killed if you don't drop out of the Shinobi program. And a stalker whose infatuation has created a romanticized fantasy expectation of me that nobody can live up to. Damn, that was savage. Thought Tenten. I believe you require aloe vera, taunted Neji, with a smug expression, or citric disinfectant to treat your third-degree burns, jerk muttered Haruno. Peasant whore. As Sakura prepared to punch the Hyuga, Naruto warned, don't even think about it. He insulted me, grumbled Haruno. You and Ino-chan insult each other all the time, without getting violent. Attacking anyone who insults you is childish, reckless, foolish, dangerous, and impulsive. What if you behaved like that towards a client, a relative, a comrade, a superior officer, a peer, or a political ally? But... Neji's trained in the fighting styles of the second most formidable Taijutsu-oriented clan in the village. And has probably been training since he could walk, pointed out Naruto. You have no training besides the most basic textbook moves, and you've most likely never trained or practiced them outside of school. Why are you intervening? Questioned Neji. I have no desire to see the Banshee being gentle fisted by someone wearing a shower cap. Deadpan Naruto, earning laughter from Tenten. You said my clan's taijutsu is the second most formidable in the village. Which clan's taijutsu is the first? Finding their respective fighting styles complemented each other, the Uzumaki and Senju clans co-developed several new fighting styles to celebrate the marriage between Queen Mito Uzumaki of Uzu and Lord Hokage Hashirama Senju. These fighting styles were utilized by my mother, Kushina, the Red Death of Konoha. I would be most interested in seeing such fighting styles with my own eyes for I hear she was truly a sight to behold on the battlefield. This youthful information is most insightful, commented Lee. And Naruto, you look very different from how I was led to believe, the benefits of appearance altering seals, shrugged Naruto, it's more effective than a genjutsu or henge. It can only be released by the caster or another seal master. Do your flames of youth burn bright? Along with my will of fire, Kakashi. Why don't we train our youthful teams together today? Asked Guy, enthusiastic. Please, no, thought Sakura and Sasuke, mortified. I don't mind training with Guy's team, agreed Naruto, as long as I get to spend time with the ever graceful Tenheim. I haven't even given them the bell test yet, mentioned Hatake. Emo and Pinky have only just graduated from the academy. You're a veteran Jonin, deadpanned Naruto, if getting the bells is really the objective. They don't stand a chance no matter what handicaps you set. They'll only get the bells if you let them, which you won't. Or if I get them myself, which I have no desire to do. And they despise me, so they'll refuse help from or refuse to help me during your test. The Genins looked at Naruto in surprise. Spoiler alert? Asked Kakashi. If you try to send this ticking time bomb of a squad back to the academy, began Naruto who took out a book, I'll spoil this newly finished, and unreleased, limited and extended edition of Icha Icha Tactics for you. Absurd. Such a trivial thing could not possibly persuade an elite Jonin on the level of Kakashi Hatake. Scoffed Neji. You wouldn't. Panicked Kakashi, sweating bullets. Wanna bet, Kashi Niikan? Asked Naruto, making direct eye contact. Turning to Team 7, Kakashi sighed, thanks to Naruto, I'm letting you pass, but on a probationary basis until I make my final decision, then eagerly turned to Naruto, now hand over the precious, easy, golem, chuckled Naruto. And what are the magic words? Naruto Atoto, can you please hand over the precious? I'll buy you dinner at Ichiraku's. All you can eat. Handing over the blue book which Kakashi went to open, Naruto stepped back before there was a small charge, shocking Kakashi who was brought to his knees. Ah, it worked? Thought the Genins, caught off guard. I've underestimated Naruto's skills and deception more than I thought. Muttered Uchiha. Kakashi, gasped guy who turned to Naruto, my youthful friend. What was that? A few simple security seals used for confidential documents. It can only be opened by the author of the contents, the one who placed the seal, 
or after its official release date. It also appears blank if it's left open. We can't have an impatient reader spoiling an unreleased book, can we? Asked Naruto who added, it just wouldn't do, you know? All too innocently, causing some of the present company to laugh and sweat drop. That was mean, dejectedly said Kakashi. Serves you right for trying to read pervy sage's smut in front of these young, impressionable Janan, scolded Naruto whose hair stuck up as he glared, you know? Kushinahan would be so proud of you, chuckled Hatake who inquired, and what kind of monster put such seals on the precious? I would, and it's another way to prevent you from reading it around women, especially Naihime. Replied Naruto whilst Team Guy made their exit. Facing Naruto, Kakashi smiled, You blackmailed me into passing a flight risk of a squad. You took advantage of my precious and used underhanded tactics to exploit me. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Niiken. Suspicious, Sakura looked at Naruto, Where did you even get that book? From Jiraiya Sensei, aka the Pervy Sage, answered Naruto. He's why I created the sexy jutsu, which can be done for both genders. The change is a legit shapeshift. Not a simple illusion like the transformation jutsu. The name could use some adjustment. From how red Sakura's cheeks are, I'd say it'll work well on her. Mused Naruto. But which version? Or should I try both? No. Don't try them on me. Please, I'm begging you. For the love of Kami, don't use that jutsu on me. You've just revealed a rather pathetic weakness to people who could easily become your opponents. Patiently waiting, Kakashi asked. Shall we get started with training? We still need to evaluate your skills and abilities firsthand. Not on the academy's rooftop, we won't, answered Naruto. Why not? We don't want to burn down or blow up the academy with an overcharged fire-style jutsu in the nearby gas tank, pointed out Naruto who turned to his teammates. Speaking of which, do you know what your primary elemental affinity is? One of mine is wind, and Sasuke's primary affinity will be fire like the rest of the Uchiha. But what about you, Sakura? Stunned, Sakura lowered her head in shame, I don't know. Under his breath, Sasuke muttered, Kunoichi of the year my ass. Later, exterior, Konoha, training ground 7, early afternoon. Whilst sparring with Kakashi, Naruto leapt back, then threw a pair of kunai which multiplied by 10 before he disappeared in a yellow flash which proceeded to overwhelm the Jonin who was then hit by a double Rasengan, sending him crashing into the ground. Reappearing holding both bells without a hint of fatigue, Naruto apologized, sorry, Kakashi, sitting up in his now ripped, torn and otherwise damaged gear, Kakashi groaned. That was embarrassing, kneeling by his sensei's side, Naruto's hands glowed green, it could be worse. I could have made more kunai shadow clones, or used the sword too, then healed Kakashi's injuries. I know. What were those last jutsu? Asked Sasuke, interested. They're part of my inheritance, summarized Naruto. Keep the Sharingan eyes off of them if yours awakens. Attempt to steal them, or go whining to the council about it, and you'll lose the eyes before they can gain their second tomoe or awaken the Sharingan at all. I take it that's not an empty threat? Would you want anyone stealing your techniques, clan jutsu, and personal moves from you? Fair point. Naruto, did you really have to threaten Sasuke-kun? Asked Sakura, he was just curious. Can't you tell us what they were? If you'd actually paid attention in history, instead of daydreaming about raping Sasuke, you'd recognize the Rasengan and the Flying Raijin. Really, was the academy bribed into letting you graduate with falsified grades? Sakura awkwardly chuckled, well, you've got to be kidding me thought Kakashi and Sasuke. I can also do the multi-shadow clone jutsu, which makes the kunai shadow clone jutsu easier to master, and all the more terrifying for my opponents when I use both, mentioned Naruto. Please, I bet you couldn't even do the clone jutsu, scoffed Sakura, there's no way. Earning eye rolls. Kakashi raised an eyebrow, he just did the Rasengan and Horishin, and you don't think he can do shadow clones? Wanna bet on that, Sakura? Asked Naruto. If you're actually capable of it, I'll take my training more seriously, you should always be taking it seriously. Reprimanded the three boys. Naruto didn't even need a hand sign before every inch of unoccupied space in the training ground was filled by shadow clones. Are you kidding me? Asked Sakura, shocked along with Uchiha. And were solid clones too, stated one of the shadow clones. I don't suppose you're willing to teach me some of your moves? Asked Uchiha. With a small smile, one of the Naruto clones poked the emo's forehead, causing him to flinch. Okay. Now I have seen some of Sasuke and Naruto's moves, Sakura, you're up, stated Kakashi who took a taijutsu stance as the pink-haired girl approached. Taking her textbook stance, Sakura said, ready, sensei. For the record, I'm not expecting you to have any spectacular or flashy moves yet. Just show me what you already know. From there, we can work something out and experiment with different styles to help find one that really suits you, okay? Yes, 
Sensei, your squad mates may be willing to help you train even when I'm not supervising. And don't be shy about practicing with the other Janan, or asking Shinobi tutors for a little extra help. As if I'd need Naruto Baka's help, scoffed Sakura, I'll never need it. You'll regret saying that one day. Whilst watching Haruno and Kakashi's one-sided spar, Sasuke stood next to Naruto. You've had extremely advanced and intense training. So, who trained you? None of your business. The council may try putting you under the CRA for your bloodlines. If they do, I will participate on my terms, and with the willing consent of my potential partners. It's all voluntary, and if a relationship doesn't work out, I won't force someone to be with me. How well do you think they'll take that? There'd be very vocal resistance to approving my participation by the civilian council who think I'm a demon. And that's because I mentioned that the villagers think I'm QB in human form, how they've treated me and how they've continually tried to kill me. Wasn't anyone protecting you? Let's just start sparring. Oh, please, I'm an elite of the U began Sasuke before Naruto's fist knocked him onto his back. The only names in the ninja world that matter are the ones people make for themselves by their own reputation. Names like the Sanin, the Copy Ninja, White Fang, Yellow Flash, Red Death, Unruly A, the Tailed Beast Without a Tail, the Professor, the Teleporter, Demon of the Mist, Seven Ninja Swordsmen, and the blue beast. I take it my claim of being an elite's the first thing you want to beat out of me? Yes, since arrogance like that will get you and your comrades killed. You're not in the academy anymore. There's always going to be someone stronger to overcome, answered Naruto as he took a stance. Now, shall we dance? Taking his Uchiha interceptor stance, Sasuke nodded, if you land even one hit, I'll rein myself in with the boasting and bragging, I already landed one, and don't whine to the civilian council replied Naruto as he began evading hits. They seem to have it in for you. They're also under the delusion that they can control and manipulate you like Palpatine manipulated Annika and Skywalker. They want a new Chiha clan they can control and influence since the old one was too independent, defiant and prideful for them. I hate politicians, and that sounds like the civilian council. Naruto hit Sasuke in the gut before evading a series of attacks. I know who's really to blame for the Uchiha massacre, and I've killed him. Shocked as they stepped back from each other, Sasuke demanded. Who was it? Tell me. It was Don Zoshimura from the Elders' Council. The sick bastard's arms were covered in stolen Sharingan eyes, and another in the right eye which he hid behind bandages. He had jars full of them, using the massacre to acquire all of those eyes. And it's not the first time he's stolen the Sharingan, as he'd done so prior to the Uchiha clan's fall. Feeling no deception, Sasuke questioned, Are you saying you've avenged my clan? I had my own reasons to kill him. What did you do with the eyes he stole? I destroyed them in accordance with Konoha's dojutsu theft laws, clan laws, and out of respect for the dead. Along with returning several Uchiha corpses, including those of your parents, to their graves. If you're telling the truth, I don't know whether to thank you, or be angry that you robbed me of my vengeance. Take a number, there's a long line of people who wanted to kill Donzo out of revenge. Ten minutes later, fire style, fireball jutsu, attacked Sasuke. Water style, water bullet jutsu countered Naruto. Fire style, great fireball jutsu. Water style, water wave jutsu. Fire style began Sasuke before wood shot out from the ground, and restrained him whilst pinning his arms to his sides. That wood's from an especially flammable tree because of the oil within it in place of sap. Unless you want to burn yourself alive, fire style's a bad idea right now. Knocked into the air by wooden tendrils as he was let free, Sasuke saw a single kunai fly by him before adamantine chains hit him from multiple angles wrapped around him, then slammed him to the ground. Damn it, groaned Sasuke, that hurt my pride in my body. The local daimyo's wife's feral cat puts up more of a fight than you, replied Naruto. Maybe Tori will be an easier sparring partner for you. Sasuke staggered to his feet, I take it those chains at the end were the adamantian chains you mentioned? Yes, also, you have wood style? Yeah, it was a pleasant surprise, and undeniable proof that I'm of Senju lineage. Also, as far as I know, only the royal family of the Uzumaki clan's ancestral homeland of Uzu wield adamantian chains. Let's go again. I'm not done yet. I'd be disappointed if you were after all your boasting. This would be going differently if my Sharingan had awakened. Unlike the Hyuga's Byakugan, there's no guarantee a Sharingan will awaken inside a Uchiha. And honestly, if the pain and trauma from losing your clan, and watching it happen whilst under a Genjutsu, didn't awaken it. It's unlikely anything will. How did you know I had to watch it via Genjutsu? You survived the massacre with no physical injuries, and you were in a coma for several weeks afterwards. The timeline of events says you arrived after the massacre. Yet you've claimed to have witnessed the whole thing. Hence why I've concluded that's what you were seeing under a Genjutsu. Sasuke nodded. Makes sense. As a furry menace raced towards him, Naruto lifted it into the air with an invisible force whilst raising a hand, 
and put it in a storage scroll, they let loose Tora for the Jinan to chase again. Looks like it, agreed Kakashi as he and an exhausted Sakura regain consciousness. If the fuzzball gets any faster, it'll give Shisui a run for his money, joked Naruto, and Sasuke actually laughed for real. As Onko arrived, Naruto asked, you aren't by any chance looking for a runaway flea bag? The little monster stole one of my dangos, hissed Midorashi. Have you seen it anywhere? I have it in a storage scroll, and may be willing to hand it over, negotiated Naruto, in exchange for a kiss. Oh, you're getting a good one, lover. Naruto, that's unprofessional conduct. Interjected Kakashi. This coming from the guy who publicly reads smut. Countered Naruto and Anko. Amused, Anko pulled Naruto intimately close bringing his hands to her wonderful breasts, and made out with him in ways that would make Kami blush. Parting lips and taking a scroll, Anko winked before cutting Naruto's cheek with a kunai, and licking the wound which healed itself. Mmm, type B, one of the most delicious blood types, teased Anko, I'll taste you, in more ways than one, later, my foxy coon. Before she vanished, what the hell just happened? Asked Sakura. Naruto sentenced that poor cat to death at the hands of the head of the Anbu Interrogation and Torture Division. Sighed Kakashi, she loves her job and Dengo as much as Naruto loves ramen. Uzumaki pointed out, it's easy to become addicted to the only food you can afford. Or the food at the only place who will make you feel genuinely welcome and serve you a warm meal in a world that hates you more than anything. Surely not every restaurant refuses to serve you? Asked Sakura. The only two civilian-owned restaurants in this village that willingly serve my blonde persona, without overcharging me, are Ichirakus and the Dengo Diner, said Naruto. Also. That wasn't the scroll containing the little menace. Then what did you give her? Inquired Kakashi, concerned. Compensation for her lost dango. Answered Naruto as he approached Team Ten who showed up, out of breath. Passing the scroll containing the fugitive Tuino, Naruto informed, Cats in the scroll, don't open it until you're with the client and the paycheck. Also, tell her that Tora's breed of cat doesn't like most forms of physical affection. To be gentler, and to be more aware of when Tora's uncomfortable. She's a cat not a human child. Tora keeps running away, like Sasuke running from his fangirls, because she's scaring Tora with so much attention, and that she feels boxed in which cats hate feeling. That sending someone Tora is unfamiliar with to find her is only scaring her more, and she'll return when she's calmed down, with a smile. Ino nodded, thanks. Choji asked, does anyone want to go out for barbecue, for lunch? Unrolling some storage scrolls after creating tables and chairs with wood style, Naruto set up a barbecue, rugs tablecloths, an esky, some baskets, and a picnic set, I've brought it to us. The present company, except Sasuke and Sakura who left, looked at Naruto in wonder whilst Kura and I joined them too. As everyone else got seated, Naruto summoned a wood clone to help him prepare the ingredients. Would you like me to help you? Offered Dino as she joined Naruto by the barbecue, a decent cook herself. We can consider this a teamwork exercise, mused the redhead, and thank you. By the way, I've never actually liked Sasuke. I was faking so people would underestimate me by dismissing me as a fangirl. Ino-chan, you deserve someone who'll be there for you unconditionally, and give you the love, devotion, support, kindness, attention, and affection you deserve. Yamanaka smiled, Ah, you're sweet. Then kissed Naruto's cheek. As he turned off the barbecue, Naruto used several clones to distribute the food and beverages. Naruto blushed when Kura and I sat in his lap, facing towards him and gave him a prolonged kiss on the lips whilst closely embracing him, shocking the present company. Am I missing something, Naiheim? Asked Naruto as her breasts pressed against his chest. With a chuckle, Kurunai pointed to his apron with the words kiss the cook. Across his chest before pulling it off of him, then whispered, it's a shame you aren't wearing your fuck the cook, apron. Then again, you best only wear that one for me and Onko-chan. Before her words became inaudible, as something hard poked against her, Kurunai giggled and blushed upon realizing what it was, then whispered into Naruto's ear, happy to see me, are we, darling? Whilst he blushed, Naruto gave a slight nod, as always, Naiheim. Anko-chan often boasted of your legendary prowess as a kisser, Naru-kun, mentioned Yuhi, with a hint of mischief. Do you agree with her assessment, Naiheim? Asked Uzumaki, she's always understated how wonderful your kisses are, ditto, and if you want or need more of them, just let me know, Naiheim, will do. Naru-kun, if you're free tonight, I'd be honored to take you out to dinner if you'll allow me. Anko-chan's already called dibs on me for tonight. Informed Kuranai, who kissed Naruto's cheek, but I'll happily go out with you some other time. Okay, love? As you wish, fair Naitenchi. Yuhi giggled, maybe I'll take you home with me tonight after all, 
since we both know Anko Chan won't mind. As long as you two lovely ladies have me in bed by nine, I might need to be up early for a mission, you know? Kur and I blushed, does it have to be your bed, Naru-kun? Nope. The Genjutsu mistress beamed, perfect. How is Naruto flirting with Kur and I sensei like that without getting in trouble? Wonder Dino. Naru-kun and I know each other very well, and have for a long time so we're comfortable flirting with and teasing each other, and we've even been on dates. Answered Kur and I as she sat beside Uzumaki. When Asuma went for his cigarettes, and Kakashi went for his orange book, they found both missing with the shadow clone of Naruto, at the head of the table, holding them. No smoking or smut allowed at this picnic, said clone Naruto who sealed away the contraband before being dispelled. Why take my cigarettes? wondered Asuma. Secondhand smoke can be just as bad for one's health, reminded Gurunai. We don't want our students inhaling anything toxic or picking up any bad habits from us. Right, Kakashi? Why am I being singled out? Asked Hitake. You were about to read the pervy sage's smut in front of the innocent little genins. Answered Gurunai, earning laughter. Since when do you call Jiraiya that? Asked Shikamaru. Since I heard Naruto calling him that, after catching him peeking at me in the hot springs. Explained Kurunai. How did he know Jiraiya was peeking at you? Wondered Choji. I sensed Naiheim's chakra presence on the other side of the wall, since I've always had pretty good sensory abilities, admitted Naruto, and pervy sage was muttering words that describe her and mentioned at least one of her nicknames, whilst taking pervert notes. Kur and I pouted, and did you take a little peek of your own after dealing with him? I heard a scream on the other side of the wall, so I looked to see if anyone was hurt. Oh, that was Anko tearing off our towels, using one of her smaller snakes as a distraction. Did you get a good, memorable look, Naru-kun? I was more worried about your well-being, but yes because of my photographic and eidetic memory. And don't worry, pervy sage didn't see anything. I checked his memories. Naru-kun. Darling, only you could look through a pervert's people with noble intentions. Then admit it to one of the women you saw while doing so. I've never lied to you, fair Naiheim. I know, and I appreciate your honesty with me, Naru-kun. Asuma sensei's jealous of how close you two are. Noticed Shikamaru, with an amused smirk. I'm not jealous. Protested Asuma, unconvincingly. Sure you're not, giggled Kur and I. You just denied it so quickly that we don't believe you. Okay, yes. I may be a little jealous that he's so close to you. You always said no when I asked you out. Asuma, you're over 20 years older than me. Now I just feel like a dirty old pervert. Maybe because you are, teased Kakashi. Hey, at least when I read smut and porn, it's in private, not in public. Countered Asuma before he and Kakashi felt a rise of killing intent from Kurunai and Dino. Naruto rose to his feet, placed two complete Icha Icha collections on the table, and grinned at Asuma and Kakashi, Amaterasu. As the books were reduced to a memory by the black flames, yes, those were yours. Kur and I smiled at Uzumaki, see you tonight, at my place, Naru-kun. Gave him a parting kiss on the cheek, and shun shinned away. At the same time, Interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, Torture and Interrogation Division, Private Interrogation Room. As she unrolled and opened the storage scroll upon a table revealing not the fugitive flea bag, but half a kilo's worth of dango and a case of sake, Anko's eyes gleamed, yes. 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 Kami, yes. Naruto, I fucking love you so much. Yes. Fuck, yes. Yes. Interior, Konoha, Anbu HQ, Torture and Interrogation Division, Corridor. Passing by Anko's interrogation room, Iviki wondered, are they added in there, again? On second thought, I don't want to know. Again? Asked Tenzo. Later, Exterior, Konoha, Third Hokage's Estate, Study, Sunset. Speaking with a cloaked figure. Hiruzen sidestepped before Naruto appeared next to him in a yellow flash. Grandpa, greeted Naruto, in his Anbu uniform and mask, who noticed the third person. Hey, Niiken. Hello, Naruto, greeted Itachi, you're all grown up. Naruto smiled, and still waiting for that bowl of ramen you promised me. Making Itachi chuckle and Hiruzen laugh. How's Sasuke? Asked Itachi. He's an arrogant, egotistical, entitled, narcissistic. Bruder with an elitist superiority complex. He boasts about the power of a Sharingan he hasn't even awakened. He said everything handed to him on a silver platter by the civilian council. Deadpan Naruto, they call him the last loyal Uchiha, despite how Shisui and Izumi are alive. Sasuke has no concept of loyalty. All he cares about is power and revenge. And I believe he's fallen under the Uchiha curse of hatred even without the Sharingan. How unfortunate, and disappointing. Do I have your permission to kill him if I need to? If it comes to it. Yes. Confirmed Itachi. Naruto placed his right hand over Itachi's eyes, hold still, before they glowed with golden chakra, 
I've taken care of the ocular bleeding and deterioration causing drawback of your Mongekyo Sharingan, and cured you of all of your present illnesses and symptoms. How? An ancient sage healing art developed by Ashura Otsutsuki. Moments later. Interior, Konoha, Naruto's apartment complex, Onko and Kurunai's loft, living room, mid-sunset. As he was pulled into the room by Kurunai, after appearing at her door in a flash, Naruto was immediately embraced by her and Anko. What time did Foxy-kun say to have him in bed by? Asked Midarashi, a cheeky twinkle in her eyes. Nine. Answered Kurunai, and it doesn't have to be his bed. Sweet, we can have a sleepover. Sounds like a plan. Later. Interior, Konoha, Memorial Stone, mid-morning. So, what do you recommend I teach our little genins first? Asked Kakashi. Chakra control exercises like tree climbing, water walking, meditation, and the leaf exercise. And physical exercises to increase their stamina, speed and reflexes so they're more likely to stay alive in their first battle. Answered Uzumaki, it'll make Konoha look weak and vulnerable if the so-called Uchiha elite under your tutelage dies at the hands of a common bandit. Agreed. We both know the civilian council, if they're not put in their place, will push for Team 7 to participate in the exams regardless of your assessment on its readiness, just to show off Sasuke like a star attraction at the circus or the zoo. Exterior, Konoha. Training ground, late morning. Noticing Haruna limping as she arrived after Sasuke, Naruto asked, So, how's your ambition of restoring your clan coming along? Sasuke wore the same clothes he had on yesterday, which Naruto could tell from the creases. Sakura wore a light pink sports bra and short mini skirt, a utility pouch, a pink belt, sandals, and her headband like a hair ribbon. As his and Sakura's cheeks flushed, Sasuke muttered, Shut up. Ooh, someone's grumpy. Didn't you two last long enough last night? Naruto, gasped Sakura, what kind of easy, shallow whore do you think I am? You don't want me to answer that. As he appeared in a puff of smoke, Kakashi, with his father's sword sheathed behind his back, greeted, Good morning, my cute little genins and my little brother's doppelganger. Morning, acknowledged clone Naruto, the boss will be here any minute, but he sent me ahead so he isn't technically late. Given we shadow clones are fully sentient and we share our memories with the original when we dispel. Sasuke raised an eyebrow, he had time to send a clone ahead, but didn't come himself. He knew Kakashi would be late, so he took his time. Then where is he? Clone Naruto pointed behind them, to Naruto approaching with the Hokage before disappearing. Not sorry to keep you waiting because I had other priorities. There was this old man with his grandson who needed lots of help carrying their groceries. Then the kid asked me to play with him whilst giving me puppy dog eyes. Then the old man thanked me by taking me and his grandson out for breakfast. But he forgot his wallet. So I paid. Then I walked his grandson to school. And the old man asked to meet my sensei. So I brought him with me, explained Naruto. I made sure not to rush since the old man wanted to stop and appreciate some of the sights. And here we are. Lord Hokage. Is this true? Asked Sakura, skeptical. Of course it is. Answered Iruzen. I have a feeling there's more to your visit than you're letting on, Lord Hokage, stated Kakashi. I need to speak with young Sasuke. Informed Iruzen, we have much to discuss on private matters with some survivors. What do you mean? Asked the emo before a familiar duo Shunshin next to Hiruzen. Shisui? Izumi? Asked Sasuke, I thought you were dead, we couldn't tell anyone we were alive without compromising the mission we were on. Explained Izumi, thank Kami, I'm not the last besides Itachi anymore, sighed Sasuke, I can't stand the civilian council's crap. Kakashi turned to the emo Janan, Sasuke, take the day off so you three can catch up. Before the Uchiha trio and Hiruzen left. What's on the agenda today, Kakashi? Asked Naruto. Well, I think you two should get some sparring in. And since you're openly using your mother's sword now. I figured I should get back in the habit of using mine so you have another swordsman to train with. Any specific rules for me and Sakura's spar? Taijutsu moves only for sparring. I intend to take full advantage of the wonderful opportunity to have your clones perform multiple different training exercises. I know what you mean. I've been doing it since I learned the wood clone jutsu and multi-shadow clone jutsu. Can I learn the latter jutsu? Asked Sakura. With a sigh, Kakashi explained. Multi-shadow clone jutsu is a forbidden jutsu that requires a considerably higher amount of chakra than the shadow clone jutsu. I can create up to four shadow clones, but I can't sustain them for longer than maybe five minutes before they dispel. But Naruto Baka can create thousands of them, and do entire training regimens with them. Well, Naruto-kun has far higher chakra levels, potency and reserves than his parents did at the height of their power. His mother had the highest chakra levels ever seen in the Uzumaki clan which is saying quite a lot as their chakra levels were always breaking records. Oh, please, I bet Sasuke-kun can do that jutsu better than Naruto Baka. 
you'd lose that bet, and Sasuke would die in the attempt. You also shouldn't be insulting and putting down your teammates and comrades. Humph, Naruto Bak is neither, and will never be either. Stepping to the side, Naruto removed and neatly folded his cloak which he sealed inside a storage scroll, then noticed Haruno was staring at his muscles, when you're done staring like a pervert, you can pick your tongue up off the grass, Naruto, sighed Sakura as her shoulders lowered, really? FYI, you'd benefit from spending less time doing your hair, starving yourself, and stalking the emo, and more time training, I didn't ask you for advice, Baka, I know the perfect place for the four of us to go camping for a real teamwork exercise, mentioned Naruto with a hint of mischief. Is that so? Asked Sakura, suspiciously, and where is that? Survival Training Ground 44 aka the Forest of Death. Was this suggestion courtesy of Anko? Inquired Kakashi. It's not so bad after you learn its layout and terrain, and what flora and fauna live there. If there's ever a snake that talks, it'll be a summons. And you'd better hope it's not one sent by Orochimaru of the Sanin. Sanin? Asked Sakura. Studying the Sanin can be your homework tonight, replied Kakashi. You should have learned about them early on in the academy. Creating a shadow clone, Naruto ordered, spar with Haruno. I'm going to practice with Sensei. Okay, boss. Activating his Sharingan, Kakashi drew the white fang, ready, Naruto? Uzumaki readied his katana, let's do this. Later, exterior, Konoha, training ground, early afternoon. As they finished the catastrophically one-sided spar which the clone only evaded during, Sakura was completely exhausted, I'm done. Clone Naruto deadpanned. You need to work on your stamina, and start eating properly instead of starving yourself. I don't want to become fat by overeating. You are neglecting your health by denying your body the nutrients, vitamins and protein a shinobi needs. It's stunning your physical growth and development, and weakening you. Ask any experienced Kunoichi for advice and tips. The next day, exterior, Konoha, training ground 7, late morning. Meeting up with team 7, Kakashi greeted, Good morning, my cute little genins. Any missions today, or more training? Asked Sakura. Well, I actually have some techniques to attempt teaching you that Naruto suggested. Should we be worried? Asked Sasuke. Yes, be very, very afraid. Naruto, can you walk Sakura through the drills of Shicho while I do the same for Sasuke? Requested Hatake. When I suggested getting others to help you with your first Shinon squad, I didn't mean me, protested Naruto. Just try, will you? As a favor to me? I have my own training to do. She can have a clone, but really... It's something you can walk both of them through at once. As it was created, Wood Clone Naruto ordered, Sakura, assume the ready position of Form I, Shicho, before the fangirl raised a borrowed katana into a sloppy excuse of a ready position and stance. Really? You call that a stance? Scoff the Wood Clone, this is just embarrassing. The sword's not weighted properly, lied Sakura. You're not even holding the sword properly. Don't have your main hand so close to the hand guard. Move your left hand down the hilt a little so your hands aren't overlapping. Make sure those feet are apart, you're not a bowling pin. Who knew learning a damn opening stance would be so hard? Why and Sakura who tried correcting her stance? For the love of, grumbled with Naruto who created a shadow clone that perfectly took the stance, then turned to Sakura, like that. She nodded before correcting her stance, then her gaze drifted towards Uchiha. Stay focused, for fuck's sake, snapped Wood Naruto, or so help me. I will shove an exploding kunai up your fuck hole, and say you died from an orgasm. Making the girl faint into the mud whilst Kakashi and Sasuke, who'd overheard, laughed. Deep in meditation as he sat cross-legged in a lotus position, the real Naruto gathered nature energy as he floated above the ground, perfectly still, with a glowing aura of starlight white chakra. That's the end guys if you enjoyed then make sure to leave a comment this is Chaos Shinobi signing off.